Hello everybody and welcome back to the Triple Jump Podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. And my name is Ashton. She's back. I'm She's back. here. I'm back from my holiday. Welcome back, Ashton. Thank you. Did you have nice plops? I had a lovely plops, thank mm. you. Yeah? I had a nice time on a beach mm-hmm. and I drank lots of alcohol and I ate lots of food. Was it warm? It was lovely and it warm. It looked very nice and warm. And I got bit by a bit. billion bugs. You got bit? Mm. What kind of bugs? Uh, I think I was getting bit by mosquitoes. Oh. Yeah, and on the worst day of it, I had a grand total of 42 bug bites <gasps> on my body. Oh, you counted? God. I did because I was like, everyone else in the family was getting like one or two mm. and I was Covered. Did that you have any like anti, people. like you know, like yeah, the stuff you I, can put on the, the lemony? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had we had candles, we had spray, we God. had everything, and I was getting eaten alive. So Irresistible much, to bugs. One Just of my bugs. So delicious. Yeah, one of my bug bites was so big that, uh, and it like was like this big on my leg. Oh so my um, I went into the pharmacy that was near the house, and I was like, "Hello, what do about this?" <laughs> and I showed him it, and Doctor Cristiano was his name, and he yeah. went, "Whoa." <laughs> What's happened there? And I was like, I don't know. I don't your, know. your stupid country is so what's happened <laughs> yeah. here. So he gave me some like mega antihistamines and some like steroid cream to get yeah. rid of them. So now you're like jacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Full of steroids. I, ha- I still have one, like a bunch of like still on my hands and my and arms. Fingers, oh, There's like no. one like right there. Oh. And then I'm like there. Well, you'll be pleased to know that crazy. literally no bugs could possibly survive in the weather that we've been no, having. No, I know. Well, there are some daddy long legs and that's it. There yeah. are, but they're but not going to bite you. No. no, they're not. They're just going to sort of loom ominously yeah. and then and then fly towards you suddenly and they mm. go, ah. Have we got Dead Island to the spider? Uh, Dead Island to the There's spider. There's one up there. Yeah, there was one up there Yes, uh, last up, week. He's up there. The one that's There's da- another one up there as is well. One, the one that's down there is gone. There's um, one up in that top corner where Dead Island 2 likes to be. Oh, yeah, I see it. So there's lights right mm. next to me. Um, yes, yeah, so we've got a few spiders. There's a number of webs in here, but yeah. nothing that can give you more bites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, that's yeah. nice. But well, it's lovely, lovely to have you back, Ashton. Thank you. And we were... It was a quiet get- week in gaming last week, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, nothing, nothing happened. happened. Nothing, nothing happened at all. No. Nothing oh. happened while I was away. There wasn't any showcases. There no. wasn't any major leaks. Big leaks, There wasn't yeah. any big drama. This podcast we will probably week. be a really short one. Yeah, yeah, nothing, yeah. Nothing, nothing happened really this week. To talk about. Uh, but, of course, we also missed you at the summer party, which we said oh, yeah. uh, on the podcast last How week we were just about to have. It was really nice. Yeah. It was, yeah, we were in, what did we have, like the upstairs of a bar? Mm-hmm. Kind of place. In like, like you arches. were in like a bunker or yeah. something. It yeah. did feel like it's in one of the railway arches. Right. So yeah, it did yeah. feel like a a bit like a bomb it was shelter. Like metal lined. Um mm. and it was really hot. Yeah. That was another thing I I can remember. Uh there was like one AC unit in the middle. Right. And every, everyone was just congregating around this like this square, yeah. like we were worshipping it. Mm. Um, but it, it was, was nice. Yeah, it was really good. It, it felt was slightly was unwell the next day. Oh, did but, you? Did you? Yeah. I didn't even drink that much, but maybe I just not. Went hard on the buffet. Well, no. How no. was the buffet? Uh, the buffet was, was uh, w- w- we were very grateful for it being there. And there was some really delicious stuff. But yeah. uh, a lot of the sandwiches had um, like coleslaw in. Yeah. Which sort of threw. Most of the sandwiches were left. Threw no, yeah, threw a number of us. But the rest of the buffet was lovely. Lots of like chicken and yeah. uh, like breaded, like just finger foods. You know? yeah. Was nice. um, Coldaholics Emma there? No, no, she was. So see. Adam managed to plan a summer party where none of his female employees None, none, none of the women came. No, wow. unfortunately. Yeah, I think it was intentional. I think it was intentional. Um, One of the little boys club, did he? Yeah. yeah. Well, the a lot of partners club. were there. That's lot, true. Yeah, there were several a lot women of partners there. were there, yeah. but uh, <laughs> the female employees were, <laughs> for some reason, all away on the date. It was a slightly more out. exotic buffet. I used the word very loosely. In, a, in, a, in a white <laughs> British man. Coleslaw. Yes, <laughs> coleslaw. No, it had, um, it had some like nice Indian food and stuff. Yeah. For like samosas and things mm. like that. Whereas, you know, I went in there thinking it was just going to be sausage rolls, chicken legs, and sausage rolls. But Which there were some, fine with some nice like tempura prawns, things Ooh. like that. There was a vegan exotic. Platter. And it was all in the hottest room yeah. on earth. Lovely. So the, the later the evening went on, the Sweaty less attractive the coleslaw yeah, sandwiches. People were like leaving the uh, some of the fish and chicken. Uh, yeah, but it was it was really nice, really really good. It was it was uh, a nice time. Good, I'm and glad you had a lovely time. Won't be long until the Christmas party. I know, so I a, late, that, yeah. a late summer party. But mm. yeah, it was it was good fun. Uh, each and every week, though, we are sponsored by a very real video game adjacent sponsor, and I believe Peter has the ad read in front of him right there. Yeah, you know how cyberpunk was quite sort of divisive, or remains quite divisive, because mm-hmm. I mean, initially it wasn't that divisive. Everyone kind of agreed this is bad mm. uh, but obviously you have your big defenders you have people who are early adopters james jenkins james yeah. jenkins he's um, just in a category of his own yeah. he is yeah uh and people get cross about things you know well 
Cyberpunk, the people behind Cyberpunk, CDPR, have said, hey, look, we don't like to see all these people getting mad at each other in the world. Um, and not just in relation to our game, but, you know, Xbox fans don't like PlayStation fans. Oh. Mm. Sonic fans don't like Cool Spot fans or whoever. Nintendo yeah, fans. Nintendo fans. So they have come up with a brand new DLC that they're hoping will just bring everyone together to enjoy them. So no matter what you like, yeah. mm. it's coming soon, this yes. week, I think. Cyberpunk Fandom Synergy. Oh, wow. oh. that sounds nice. That does sound nice. Can we all do the... Yeah, we're merging, we're putting our hands, hands together. together. Just listening on audio Can form. Can we get a good audio of that? I have to do it really Synergy. Hard. Synergy. Synergy. Fandom Synergy. Synergy. It works so well, I can almost believe that it's real. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not. Uh, well, then why do fingers why? do that? I don't know. If not real, if why not do real, fingers why do fingers that? Do the fandoms are doomed to remain angry at each other oh, for, for liking God's sake. things. God damn. That Sorry makes me, about that. That makes me that angry. That was a brief glimpse of hope mm. in my eyes, and now it's been it's ripped been, away. It's yeah. been torn away. No, we are not sponsored by any kind of fandom synergy. We are, of course, sponsored by our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. If you go and support us there, we have all sorts of tiers available, including main menu and rules boss. Uh, we've got a new main menu ready to go, and we're recording a rules boss this week that's how far ahead we are there's mm -hmm. all sorts of amazing stuff there early worst games early weirdest games go check it out patreon.com forward slash team triple jump triple jump is our website that's where you can go to find all of our stuff our youtube twitch discord if you want a cameo from us uh, the shop is triple jump shop.com we're wearing some merch today you're wearing no. some merch you're not wearing any merch that's i've lost my despicable. jacket and there's a shirt under there as well. Look I'm at worried that. I've left my jacket on the plane. Oh, no. On the plane. I don't remember taking it on holiday, but I haven't seen it since I Okay, <laughs> so it's it's somewhere, potentially. Yeah. Uh, what's out on the channel this week, guys? What's been happening? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I do um, know. It's right there. It's right there. You've yeah. written it down. It's a, a big rank list again, mm. and it's relevant. It is a game relevant. that came out it's very recently. Mm. Uh, it's ranking all of the Baldur's Gate 3 companions. Mm. I bet people will completely agree and have rational discussions in the comments. I have one. Synergy. There's got yes. to be one that's the best. How was it ranked? Was it like likability? Whether it you was, can flip a bear. A yeah. number of factors. There was, uh, if they're uh, bear flippable, obviously played a, a big factor. Yeah. Yeah. There was also, are they a dick? Uh, how valuable they are in combat and their other various skills as so well and if, usefulness. If they're God's favorite princess, yes. does that make them number one? Um, that would be spoilers. That would, would, be, that would be spoiling. I guess, there might yeah. be a prince at number one. We don't. We can't oh, possibly say, but that... Is a God's favorite prince or princess at number mm, one? Possibly. I don't, I, don't I don't know. It's just no way of knowing. But <laughs> there is, actually. If you go to uh, youtube.com forward slash team triple jump and watch that ranked video because it's out now. Mm. Um, also, thank you very much to everybody who bidded on our art from SMTJ Live. Yeah. The uh, the listings have now ended. I think they ended on practically the same, mm. same, same number. And so. it did fluctuate, like... I think there was a, a time period for each of us where we were all in last yes. and in first. So uh, you guys had double. You what really I had for a love while. me. Everyone <laughs> lo loves all three of us. That's very nice. Uh, thanks. I saw that the, someone bought the slime bath. Yes, yeah. someone. Well, it's somebody like thirty did. pounds. Mm. Which that's, do you know what? They got. That's yeah. that's bonkers. I have to make sure I put the uh, the sachet. No, 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 not the sachet. The like the. The instructions. Yeah. The instructions. The right. eggs. Okay. There are so many still on my desk. Wouldn't want to make it wrong, would no, you? No, no, no. Because there exactly. is a right way to there make is a right it, way where, to it's, make it. where it's good. Uh, so if you have bought those, we should have them with you soon. But if you have bought them and you haven't paid yet, make sure you pay because we're not going to send it to you until you pay. Yeah. Uh, shall we move on to question what? I think we should. Yes. This question comes from Dan Scott, who says, Hello, Bap. Recently, it was announced that Volition, the creators of Saints Row, were closing. At the same time, the recent Saints Row reboot was announced as a free PS Plus game for August, and the Saints Row subreddit is now filled with posts of people playing the game for the first time and saying, you know what, I actually quite like this game, now that they're getting to play it for free. I suppose my question is this. Without changing the composition of the game, could the Saints Row reboot have been a success and could Volition have been saved? Did it suffer from poor marketing? Was the price point in our crumbling economy too high? Were they done dirty by the mediocre reviews? Or was the situation simply unsalvageable and Volition only have themselves to blame? Love to you all. Kiss, kiss. I'm Thanks glad down. that people are enjoying Saints Row. So yes, me too. Now, when I say I had a good time playing Saints Row, he won't be like, oh, that game what? is rubbish. I feel like I was, was the one of the only people at launch that gave it like, because we got it a bit early yeah. and I covered it in 
review corner, I imagine, or maybe Quipscope, I can't remember what we were doing at the time. And I was like, actually, this was a breath of fresh air from all the other games I'm playing at the moment, and I had quite a nice time with it. I did too. And then everyone was like, this is terrible! You're an idiot if you like this game! Yeah. And yeah, maybe people should have just given it a try. Well, I went onto the subreddit, and the top post, I don't know if it was the top voted post, but it was a recent popular post, was called... Actually had a lot of fun with it. Wasn't nearly as bad as I was led to believe back when it came out. Yep. Um, and according to Metacritic, uh, this doesn't tell us when each review came in. So some of them can be recent, some of them could be from a while ago. But at the moment, it stands at 61% according to 66 critics, but only 3.0 out of 10 uh, according to 1,057 uh, 1, users. Mm. So um, I think that's a bit harsh. Yeah, yeah I three have a... seems hard. I mean, I, I admittedly haven't played it, but I've seen it. I've se I've watched gameplay of it, and it is not a three game. A three. Mm. No, game. it's not. I think a lot of people were, and and I completely understand where they're coming from in this regard. A lot of people were a bit upset that it kind of did away with the entire tone of what yeah. a Saints Row game was. Mm -hmm. I mean, it plays like a Saints Row game, but it it doesn't feel like a Saints. If that makes sense, like story wise no. and the position you're put in it's like basically unrecognizable yeah. and i think yeah. even there are just there are uh, many instances not all the way through but there are there are times when it doesn't even look like a saints row game like you do uh get get sort of pops of like wacky insane action but mm. there are moments from that game where you can take a screenshot and think what what is this what like specifically it's what desert. game is this yeah it's, it's so much desert yeah and it, it just doesn't look as saints row as yeah. saints no. row does but they were trying to sort of reinvent it to an extent mm -hmm. it's a question of whether that was the right thing to do or not i mean yeah. i think personally obviously even you two would admit i'm sure that it was a buggy game oh, oh yes it was oh, a very yes. buggy game um i've I think it's not unfair to say that it was a bit visually outdated as well, just graphically. Like, it wasn't exactly cutting edge. Um, and, um, yeah, and, and the other thing I was going to say was that it, it didn't sort of look like a Saints Row game. And it wasn't really marketed in quite the same way as well. But ultimately, I don't think that... I think, to answer Dan's question, do I think that it suffered from poor marketing? Was the price point too high? I mean, it's the same price point as various other games have, have released that and they've done very well so to me i think it's probably a combination of it being buggy because that's mm -hmm. going to just turn a lot of people off even if it's at its core a good game um and then also maybe they went the wrong direction with the sort of the slight change in tone because mm -hmm. um, people play saints row for saints row and um that wasn't quite there they changed rim jobs which was the whole joke of that being a garage chain, a chain to Jim Robs. Right. And it's like, right, so why even bother with the joke then? Mm. If you if it was already if the joke was already there and you've sort of watered it down to the yeah. point where it's it's nothing. Yeah. There were so many places where it just felt like you could have had like a real bit of satire here and for the sake of playing it extremely safe, it's like it's stingless. There's mm. nothing. There's nothing to it. I don't think that Saints Row is the reason that Volition was shut down. No, no. Um, <laughs> no. And I don't think that had Saints Row, Saints Row been changed, Saints Row would have had to have done amazingly, I think, for Volition not to be shut down. And that is because Embracer Group gobbled up loads of studios yep. and mm -hmm. then didn't have enough money for them all. And now if these studios that have been established for almost 30 years make one mistake in releasing a game that doesn't perform amazingly, they're dead. Yep. That's it. It's a gun. They've got a gun to the back of the head mm -hmm. and they don't know the lyrics to the song. They're going to get shot. So... <laughs> Is I, that a game? Is that a TikTok trend? It was just. Are they it, doing that? It was a it was a TikTok trend a little while ago. No one got <laughs> shot though. Okay, good. Yeah. That's anyway, good. Um, yeah, I think that I think Embrace a group are the reason that Volition are not there. I don't think Saints Row is the reason. I think it maybe if it had been you know if we like we we're saying if these things had been changed, if it was more Saints Row in its nature, if it had uh, less bugs and was maybe a little bit cheaper, maybe mm. it could have done better. Mm. But all of these maybe's are just because Embracer Group had, are killing studios if they don't perform yep. well enough. They're, they're, not, they're not given the leeway that they would be given if they were a studio um, on their own. Mm -hmm. Well, and on the subject of it being cheaper, I think it's, it's important to note that just because people are now saying, 
you know, this isn't so bad. Maybe that's because they're playing a free version of the yeah. game. And like, actually, if they'd paid £70 for it or, mm -hmm. or whatever it was, um, that and then sat down and played exactly the same game, you might feel a bit more shortchanged. Mm. Yeah, it's very true. Uh, but you're bang on, Ashton. The, the fact of the matter is that Embrace a group, THQ Nordic, that whole situation has been such a monumental net, po uh, net uh, negative sorry, mm -hmm. uh, for the games industry. Mm. And we've been documenting their misdeeds since they sort of started exploding in 2019. Yeah. You remember when they did that? I think it was THQ Nordic at the time. Um, they had someone go and do an AMA on 8chan or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. And everyone was like... Why would you do? How could you not know what this is? Yeah. And then they said, "Oh, sorry, we didn't know." It's like that's absolute bollocks. Yeah. Like if you if you were any good at your job, that is that is your job to mm. know what that sort of stuff is. And they went and did an eight chan thing, and then it's just been we purchased these guys, we purchased these guys, we purchased these guys, and the whole thing hinged on a two billion investment deal with the Saudi with Saudi Arabia's Savvy Games Group mm. that then fell through. So now you've got volition closing. You're getting studio staff cut all across the board. Uh, you've got flipping gearboxes apparently up for sale as well. Mm -hmm. It's it's it should be criminal. Mm -hmm. It absolutely should be criminal. I don't know enough about business to to say whether it is or it isn't. What do you but, mean? Look at your shirt. But yeah. I mean, yeah, I am wearing a Brian Butterfield shirt, and so I do know about how to fail a business. <laughs> uh, but yeah, th it feels wrong. This shouldn't be allowed, and it's just you know we talk about the Xbox acquisition of Activision Blizzard and potentially going after other targets. And we will, of course, talk about all of the leaks later on in the mm -hmm. big discussion. Uh, but this is like worst case scenario. Yeah. You know, we talk about how it doesn't feel right about all these acquisitions going on. But this is worst case scenario where it, it is quite clearly mismanaged from mm -hmm. top to bottom. Yeah. And Volition, as you said, Ashton, a studio of 30 years with a rich history, makes one crap game <laughs> and they're done mm -hmm. and they maybe wouldn't have had you know the best time of it if they were either independent or under another publisher but because of the situation that that the embracer group finds themselves in they're looking to cut weight wherever yeah. they yeah. can and yeah. that and is just already, it they've outwardly said that before like they've yeah. when the like a little while ago there was a news story where embracer group was saying that yeah, we are unfortunately going to have to make some cuts. We're going to sell some stuff. People are going to lose their jobs. And it was like, cool, great. Who saw this coming? Yeah, Not everyone, everyone ever. Mm. Everyone. But the thing is about Embrace Group is you've never really known who they own. Like, it's hard to find a list of, like, mm. every studio owned by Embrace Group or THQ Nordic. Like, it's, I'm sure it's somewhere on some website. But if you Google who do Embrace a Group own, it like the last time we had a look, I was like, I can't tell who is owned by who here. It's very confusing. And so it's really hard to gauge what they've actually put yeah, out from exactly. all these studios over the years. Because we said this a little while ago. I think we're, this is the reason I think this is hard to find. When we were talking about Embrace Group a little while ago, we said, what games have they even made? Mm. What stu what are these studios SpongeBob. creating? <laughs> yeah. And we could only think of SpongeBob and I think they owned their own Gearbox at the time. They did Tiny Tina. They don't think so. Done, I, don't I, think, I think it was um, quite a recent one. Gearbox. Yeah. Well, so, I feel like, do they, do they even know what they own? Like, no. I know the obviously the individual studios that they own, those studios themselves will know what yeah. they're responsible for mm -hmm. and, and the IPs associated with them. But do people higher up who are sort of, you know, effectively commissioning uh, projects and things, there'll be all sorts of like interesting IP in their library that they own that isn't necessarily being used. Like, I believe, I think um, they, they must own. Soul Reaver, like Legacy of Cain, which is very, very popular, like kind of cult classic series. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anything's ever going to happen with that, but that's like prime. I mean, I know it's a whole different debate about remakes and remasters and stuff, but if you just take it for granted that like, okay, people, some people like remakes, it's prime remake material right there. Yeah. Will they, would they ever do that? I don't know. Does anyone know that they've got that? And even if they did, their track record has been yeah. so like spectacularly average across mm -hmm. the board yeah. that it probably wouldn't be that great. No. Fans would be happy to have more of it, yeah. as we've seen with Destroy All Humans and SpongeBob, but they're not making Game of the Year contenders. No. And I know that that is not necessarily a bad thing because we yeah. always talk about how we need more mid-tier publishers mm. putting out stuff like THQ used to put out, but not at the, not at the risk of like just canning entire studios. Mm -hmm. They've only just flipping bought uh, 
Crystal Dynamics, haven't they? Yeah. Like they got them from Square Enix. It wasn't that long ago. God knows what their future holds. Yeah. Or what they've got. Well, Probably... that's who um, is Legacy of Kane is with. I right. Think. Yeah. I mean, God knows what their future holds. And there's a good chance that all of these studios that actually have a decent track record are probably just going to be put on flipping. Uh, well, did they recently acquire the Lord of the Rings IP? Am I am I remembering that correctly? Uh, yeah, mm. that was a little while ago as well. Yeah. I think. And so it's just go- it may just be wall to wall average Lord of the Rings licenses until so, until they crumble. Like, I don't yeah. I don't know. Ultimately though, I do, I Volition did make a bit of a naff game, mm-hmm. but it, them being closed was out of their control. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And that's uh, criminal, in my opinion, I yeah. agree. quite frankly. I agree. So there we are. Shall we do a new section? Yeah, so I thought of this section while I was on holiday, and yeah. I thought this could really work, and I pitched it to the boys, and they really loved it. Yes. It's called uh, What We Play In. Yes, that was it. It's what we play in time. Time to talk about the games, what we have been playing. Peter Austin, what have you been playing? I played a few things this week. I have finished Dishonored 1. Nice. Um, Ashton, did you finish it in the end or have you, have you still... I haven't finished 2 yet, but I finished the first you fin- one. Okay, that's fine. Because I did want to comment on one thing about the ending, which... Uh, so I got the, the non-chaotic ending. Um, and I, I knew... I, Is that the one where you save both of them? Yeah, no rats. We, Sorry? No rats. No rats. Well, no that's rats. the thing. Like, I uh, could not remember how that game ended. And it was a surprise to me that, at least in the non-chaotic ending, I've never uh, got the chaotic one, but um, the the plague is just cured at the end. And it shows, like, a, a, a zombie in a chair being, like, force-fed some, mm. some elixir. And I'm like, oh, I didn't expect this game to end with, oh, yeah, we cured the plague. Um, I think it's because you save, you keep the two scientists yeah, alive. Yeah, who are sort of trying to, who are working on it. So yeah. uh, I can't remember anything about this. No, I, now. I did not. Ex- <laughs> it doesn't bring uh, any I, I bells remember at anything. all. Mm. Yeah, um, but I was like, oh, that's a surprise. I thought like, even if I, uh, you know, sort of saved the day, generally speaking, it's still the world is still flipped. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's not. So that was good news. Um, I've played a bit more Starfield, but I have to say. I'm just not, I just don't get it. No, I don't understand no. what everyone is enjoying about this game. And I know that like most people would say to me, oh, well, if that's how you feel, you've probably just not played enough of it. And I'm like, I don't have time <laughs> to play a game that yeah. it gets good after like 12 hours. I just don't. Mm-hmm. So I don't really like the the color palettes. Uh, I don't like the ship um, flying, like managing my en- the energy in my systems and stuff. Don't like that. Uh, I'm not even that interested in the story. I just don't really like it. I like mm-hmm. I, th- there's things that I do like about it still. I think like it, the gunplay is like pretty good. Yeah. Um, and I the soundtrack's great. Um, but yeah, I don't like the over encumber mechanic in this one where you just die if you've got too much <laughs> stuff in yeah. your pocket. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, the outfits and there's just a lot where I'm like, it's just not for me. I'm not feeling it. Mm. So I'm not saying I'll never go back to it now, but I'm putting it aside and I'm going to play Baldur's Gate instead. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to play that next week. Uh, Assuming I have finished Separate Ways, the Resident Evil DLC. Oh, yeah. Um, Is that out? It came out at midnight last night. Wait, which DLC? It was a Resi 4 remake. Oh, was this announced last week? No. I don't know when it was announced, but it's part of the... So the original game Mm. just came with a separate mode that you unlock afterwards called Separate Ways. It was just on the disc uh, where you play as Ada. Um, and now Separate Ways is out on uh, on the oh. on the remake. Uh, and how much uh, does it cost? Nine ninety nine, I think. Oh, okay. Not too much. Um, and it uh, it it's it's a lot of fun. It like opens. I mean, I don't um, I don't know. How I should be too spoilery. It opens with a boss fight, uh, which right. didn't expect. Um, and it's completely different to, or at least it begins completely differently to. The separate ways in the original game because hmm. um, in the original game you start in the village as ada hmm. and go around and break a few people's necks and stuff and and cool yeah real cool hmm. uh whereas in this one uh it opens with a, a cut scene where lewis your boy lewis yes. louise yeah. is in a, a dungeon cell and you've got to release him hmm. and he's just sort of doing flamenco by himself in his jail cell just going He's he's flipping nuts. Isn't he's he? a great guy. He's crazy. Uh, anyway, I won't say any more. But that's the opening cutscene, and then there's a boss fight, and then um, it just continues in that very 
nicely remade world with uh, some... so when you said that separate ways unlocks after you finished the campaign did you were you talking about the original in the original okay yeah, i was going to say i didn't see mode. an option no, when no. i finished in the original that's how for. it worked mm. and now they've uh, they've they've monetized it whole but... new campaign well i I, yeah. I look forward to seeing reviews and then i might mm. i might get that cuz i yeah. enjoyed resi 4 so so i've only played a little bit of it because i say it only released at midnight in the uk last night mm. and uh, i got back late and i was like hmm yeah, I'm not going to bed yet. Um, so, uh, but it, uh, from what a little I've played, it seems good so far. But Great. you know, you can't really go too far wrong with these Resi remakes, really. So mm. it's probably going to be at least fine. Um, and other than that, I, for the first time ever, finished the Unholy War on hard mode. Nice. Well done to celebrate That's its it. birthday. Yeah, 25 years. Amazing. It's 25 years How old. How old are you, Ashton? On 25 Friday. Years 25, old. 25 years old. There we Goodness go. me. Um, so yeah, on Friday it was, it had its anniversary, but there you go. I've finished it now, so I won't be talking about that anymore. Um, I've talked about it for about three well, weeks. congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. It's a big milestone. Yeah. It was a big, big moment for me. Hmm. Um, Ashton, have you had any time to play games? Well, I played some games before I left mm -hmm. and then I also played some games since I got back, but not money cause I've been very sleepy. Um, <laughs> But I played, I finished Spirit Spiritfarer mm. while I was waiting for Cyberpunk to reinstall mm. on my PlayStation. <coughs> Bless you. Bless you. Ahead of the DLC. Um, and I also played some Starfield. Um, and I, I like Starfield. I'm enjoying it. But I hate flying my spaceship around. Mm -hmm. I hate having to make a spaceship. Before we went on holiday, um, I <laughs> had what can best be described as a tantrum <laughs> <laughs> when I was making my spaceship because I found it very, very annoying. I didn't understand it. It didn't explain anything to me. And I was like, I'm just going to buy a spaceship. And my boyfriend was trying to explain to me. And I was like, nope, nope, I'm just buying a new spaceship. I don't want to make one. I don't understand it. So when we got back this week, I tried my best and I made myself a spaceship. And now it looks like a turtle. A turtle, uh, brilliant. A turtle by accident. Um, I haven't made, I haven't even attempted to make a spaceship mm, yet. But no. I'm tempted to buy one, but yeah. I've not seen any that appeal to me. So I just far. don't like when I'm in a, like a dog fight in space. And I'm like, I don't, I'm just getting my ass handed to me. And I, I have no perception of how fast or slow I'm going. I don't mm. like it very much. I'd rather not have to do the spaceship bits. Um, but that's fine. Experience is the same. He doesn't like the, the space no. flying either. Um, but I, I'm enjoying the game itself. I, um, I'm just being a nice, nice girl, just mm. walking around, saying, "Do you need any help? I'll give you some help." Uh, I've done a few of the story missions. I kind of, I'm not sure if I'm gonna finish it yet. I think that. It's not captured my attention in a way where I'm like, oh, well, when this next game comes out, it's going to have to wait because I need to finish Starfield. Mm. Like, I don't quite feel that way about it. Um, but then it's one of those games that I guess you can just pick up and put down whenever yeah. you have some spare time. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, I'm enjoying that so far. Um, I've also played something else I'll talk about very shortly. Oh. Mm. Um, but Starfield has been the main thing that I've picked up this week since I got back. So nice. Yeah. Nice. I had a very busy weekend, so I didn't get a huge amount of time to play video games. I played a little bit more Starfield and I got to Neon. And then I had like three conversations with this one person and then my eyes just started glazing over. Oh my God, I'm stuck in Neon. I've just remembered. I, I got arrested. When did I, you? When I what went, did you do? I went into the um, area and all I'd accidentally stole a coffee cup while I was in one of the other areas. How could so you So I do had an that? 140 credit bounty on my head that's not the value so of a coffee cup so they arrested me and they put me in the prison mm. and now I can't get back to my spaceship because the place where you land your spaceship is restricted because I haven't entered oh, Neon no. so I'm like stuck there and I can't figure out how to get to my spaceship brilliant God, is that actually You've like a glitch trapped, I don't okay. know how to get out I'm going to have to try again but I was sat there for like half an hour being like how do I how do I get out of this and it kept taking me to this lift and the lift wouldn't let me to where I needed to go and I was like I don't know what's going on oh stuck. no so I mean, I that's trapped in that's a playthrough ender if I've ever heard that. Like, know, you know I what? I'm stuck. done with this game. But also last night, my boyfriend got killed by a bug and the autosave had saved this, like, oh. just as he was about to get hit by oh, this bug. God. So he just kept dying. Why is it autosaving in combat? Over I didn't realize it does I don't that. Know. So it's like saved as he dies. So he was just stuck there. So then he had to go back and reload his save from like half an hour earlier because he kept oh, getting no. killed by our bug. Anyway, 
Sorry, that's so, I mean, it sounds great. It sounds like you're mm. in a fantastic spot in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, I've signed up with the Free Star Rangers, which is why I've gone to Neon. But yeah, I was talking to this guy, my eyes glazed over, and I just decided I'm too tired to play this game. Mm. Yeah. So then I watched four hours of television instead and just, and just sort of went into a comatose state. Mm -hmm. uh, and I haven't played any more since because of Lies of P, mm. which we got a code for. Tweet. And I started it up and I thought... Well, I really want to keep playing Starfield because it's the kind of game that I don't want to lose my momentum with yeah. because I will forget everything that's going on. Um, and unfortunately, Lies of P is really good. <laughs> and, and and now it's all I want to play. Yeah. And Starfield's just going to have to wait until maybe I come back to it at some point. So unfortunately, while you lot probably thought, Triple Jump, they love Starfield. They talked about it for like 50 minutes last week. This week, he hates it. I, yeah. She's stuck in a lift. I'm stuck in a lift. And I'm playing Lies of P. So <laughs> unfortunately, uh, Starfield... James Jenkins still loves it, though. James Jenkins is is Starfield. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, he's going... Gaga star for Starfield, mm. Gaga for Star Star, uh, but unfortunately, yeah, I'm going to be taking a little break from it while I while I play some more Lies of P, um, and that is literally all I've had time to play. Hopefully, I'll be able to play some more Lies of P this weekend. I'm a little bit concerned though because I got st stuck on a really hard boss fight and I managed to do it. And then I was listening to a podcast where people were talking about the game, and they said, "Oh yeah, there's this um, there's this early game boss fight." And it was the boss fight that I got stuck on. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. I've not even scratched the surface. It's going to get so much worse right. for me. Uh, so I really do want to finish it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best. But also, life is very short. And the older I get, the less patience I have for being frustrated by games. And mm -hmm. I kind of just want to enjoy myself, which is crazy. But it's sort of a reckoning I'm having to... To, or a realization I'm having to sort of accept about mm. myself the older I get mm -hmm. is that I, I actually maybe the games that I used to enjoy maybe I don't enjoy so much anymore yeah. however Liza P very good and I think maybe we should hop over to the review corner and talk about it and then Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom what was it Le Fandom Ph Synergy Phantom Synergy in a bit more detail <laughs> Hello, we're here in the review corner. Ooh. Oh, hi, I'm James. I'm snuck in again and I'm joined by Ben. Hello, James. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Fantastic. All the better to talk to you about Lies of P. Oh, Life of Pi, you mean? Life of Pi, yes. keep, I keep confusing it in my head, but yeah. It, um. it is a very similar game. <laughs> it is. Uh, so this is a, it's a brand new video game, mm, James. Wow. wow. It's been attracting quite a bit of attention the past couple of years because people yeah. have said, oh, that looks really promising. And then they had a demo out earlier this year that a lot of people said, oh, it actually is really mm. promising. Uh, it comes to us from NeoWiz, who nice. I'm not really sure of their lineage and what they've made before. It seemingly uh, came out of nowhere. I think there might be an Asian developer. I'm not I sure. I believe where. so, yeah. I'm, um, but, I, yeah. Maybe they're Korean, citation yeah. needed. I'm yes. not entirely sure. Yeah. Uh, but this is their first effort that I've ever tried yeah. anyway. And uh, before we go any further, we have to say the line because we were gifted this code. Uh -oh. So per ASA guidelines, this section is technically an ad. However, there was no oh. financial compensation in exchange for coverage. We're just playing it. Uh, so I played maybe seven, eight hours of the game nice. so far. That's pretty good. And to give people an overview of, of what it's about, it is uh, loosely based on the Pinocchio story, mm -hmm. but obviously very different. This is actually the synopsis from their Steam page. So here we are. Yeah. You are a puppet created by Geppetto who's caught in a web of lies with unimaginable monsters and untrustworthy figures standing between you and the events that have befallen the world of Lies of P. Goodness. You are awakened by a mysterious voice that guides you through the plagued city of Krat, a once lively place that has been poisoned by madness and bloodlust. Oh. So this is a Souls-like. Yes. This is a Souls-like and... Uh, Normally, I don't really go for Souls likes because, as mm. I've said on this podcast numerous times throughout the years, if I want a Souls like, I'll just play a Souls just game. I want a real deal, you know? I always find they're missing yeah. something that doesn't yep. feel quite right. But this one, I was going to take the plunge with. I thought, you know what? Mm. I'm going to try this one because it reminds me most of all 
are Bloodborne. Yes, Born Blood. It's yes, good. which is my favorite yeah. of the From Software games. And the world of, obviously mm. there's the city of Crut, but this world of Lies of P, it's almost like uh, clockwork punk, if, yeah, if that makes sense. It's kind of the worlds it's... of Bloodborne, Bioshock Infinite, and Dishonored, like all rolled yeah. into one. That's that's a nice sort of um, yeah explanation for it. A nice category. <laughs> yes, if there but, is such a thing, if it can yeah. be defined. The the world is is fascinating and it's a fascinating sort of take on the uh, the Pinocchio sort of yes. uh, uh, <laughs> cinematic universe. Yeah, the sure. PCU. Why not? For sure. Um, but yeah, how, how have you found it so far? Because I had a similar sort of concern of Souls likes, um, but I've also played it by only a couple of hours worth. Mm. Um, yeah, how are you getting on? This is. I think the best Souls like ever made. That's Ooh, right. That's right. I'm going to say big it. statement. Is it on the okay. same level as a From Software Souls game? Mm. I'm going to say no, but mm. I think by quite a sizable distance for me personally, this is the best one I've ever yeah. played. To the extent that yeah, I would, I would quite confidently say, if you liked Bloodborne and you've been looking for something similar, yeah. this is the safest bet. This is the closest thing you're going to get because Sony aren't going to pull their bloody fingers <laughs> out and make it happen. <laughs> of course not. So, yes, I'm really, really impressed uh, by it so far. And it will Amazing. be instantly familiar to mm. Soulsborne fans uh, in a lot of the mechanics that it has. Yeah. So it has stargazers mm. instead of bonfires or mm -hmm. lanterns, if you will. Uh, you open shortcuts as you make your way through the levels. Yep. You have... The, the currency is Ergo or Ergo, yeah. which sort of powers the puppets. It was the mysterious fluid that allowed the city of Krat to become this incredible technical wonderland because yeah. they were able to infuse it into these puppets to automate a great deal of mm. their, you know, the day-to-day the -day workforce. So yeah. police, fire, that sort of thing. Essentially, looping back to the story, Something's gone wrong with the puppets. Yes. And they've sort of gone corrupted and just started attacking mm. all the civilians. So you don't find that many human beings in this game. That's a lie. You do find a lot of human beings in this game, but they're not alive. Yeah. They're just yeah, sort of bloodied corpses all over the place. Mm. So you're trying to get to the bottom of it. You've got Hotel Krat is sort of like your hub area, yeah. your safe zone. That's where you can upgrade your weapons and talk to NPCs and people mm. that you find in the world and bring back and buy some items. Level up there with a woman again yeah. very <laughs> from software i think the the combat's really fast mm. and i like that or it's actually quite slow depending on what you do because there's a lot of customization in this game yeah so i've i've barely sort of touched uh, on that but i've noticed that it's separated out by like um your hilt and your actual weapon or blade or whatever that's exactly it. it yeah yeah you can buy some of them and you choose a starting one obviously mm. but you find most of them in chests and around the world and uh, yeah you can use them as is yeah. or as you said, you can split them from the handle and the blade and then combine them <laughs> to, to create different things. You have to go back to, uh, to, to the hub area to do that, but mm. they obviously all have different stats. Some of them are great swords, quote unquote, yeah. that, so they'll be a bit slower. So I've combined like the starting Bitch. handle, which is quite mm. fast, with a great sword blade so that it's sort nice. of a middle ground, but does a fair bit of damage. Ooh. And you also have sort of like special abilities. I think they're called fable arts, which obviously is a lot like weapon arts in Dark yeah. Souls. <laughs> so each handle slash blade has its own characteristics in that regard mm. as well. Like usually games will say, oh, you may want to change up your approach like for different challenges. And this is the mm. first game where I've actually gone, okay, I'm not getting anywhere here with this boss. I need to go back and, ah. and juggle my equipment and change things around and give it a go. If, okay. you, if you get hit while blocking, yeah. Your health will go down, but it'll, it'll sort of be slightly faded out. And it's if got you that bloodborne esque recovery, it does. System, if you attack it? Yeah. back, if you yeah. get aggressive, you can regain some of that health. Mm. If you just take a straight up hit, you can't do that. But yeah. if you, there are certain circumstances where you can regain some of your health. There's finite healing items, much like an Estus <laughs> flask. <laughs> Uh, so when you sit at a stargazer, mm. if you die, then that will replenish, yeah. as well as various other things as well. One of the things that I like so much about it that I think really captures the essence of a From Software game yeah. is just the really horrible, unnerving environments. Because you're wow. not in the city the whole time. The you do go to various great. places. Yeah. yeah, the atmosphere is brilliant. The, on, I streamed it earlier this week, and yeah. genuinely, I'm really getting that feeling of oh God, I don't know what's around the next next corner. Each area sort of introduces a mm. new horrifying puppet abomination. Mm -hmm. And uh, I won't spoil it, but I was there were several moments on the stream where I was saying, 
Oh God, what's that thing? Oh no! Oh, why would they do that? Why would they? Why would someone make a puppet like that? That's it's awful! Good. And then it's like coming at me, and it's all like spindly and yeah. weirdly moving, and it oh, it's awful! Real sort of bloodborne vibes, especially out of the you know the from soft pantheon. Uh, it, it definitely captures that. So it's just something very creepy, especially with yes. the uh, the lighting. It does look beautiful as well, at least from what I've noted from like the starting area. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just having these freaky puppets not quite moving right and just coming out at, at you All from jerky nowhere. And yeah, strange. oh, it's, it's it's brilliant. Horrible. <laughs> uh, there are obviously bosses, and mm. they have introduced a mechanic whereby you can use a finite resource outside of a boss area, yeah. and this is how you know it's going to be a boss area. <laughs> and okay. you will get a spectre that will join you in that fight like a little it's npc a companion little, little like a summon how interesting exactly amazing however i have found that to yeah. be massively hit and miss sometimes oh, they're really right. helpful at like pulling the aggression of the boss yeah, yeah. and other times they just get hit six times in a row and die <laughs> and you're like brilliant well that was a complete waste of that resource i suppose your nose doesn't grow oh, that's something no. however there is obviously it being in the name lies yeah. play a big uh, part because there mm. are these rules of puppets they're not allowed to lie and mm. as P in this game, you do get many opportunities to tell lies in order to progress. And it'll say something like, your springs react to the lie or something. Ooh, so clearly there's I'm there's serious. something else going on here. That's I don't cool. Know. That's very cool. Don't know what it is yet. I do have a few issues with it, though, which I think is, is what... Uh, makes it not quite reach the heights of yeah. a proper uh, Soulsborne game. The difficulty spikes I have encountered mm. are immensely frustrating. I have come across a, uh, a couple of bosses now where I was just, it felt like they were so hard, yeah. uh, which did not match the level I'd played through. It'd be like, okay, this is That's challenging. Strange. And then I get to the boss and it's like, I'm going to just <laughs> smash you into the ground as hard as I can and you're going to die. Is it a, uh, just on that subject, is it a bit more sort of linear? I think it's meant to be sort of level, uh, sort of sectioned off in, in certain levels, right? But mm. do you have the option if you run up against brick wall to go uh, try a different level or different area? No, not, uh, not so far. Enough. No, you're, yeah. you're very much on the path you're on. You've yeah. pretty much just got to run around and fight the enemies uh, that are makes in the area that will, yeah, that will uh, respawn. Yeah, it makes it a bit trickier then. Yeah, yeah so that on. that's an issue I've had. Mm. I would say that some enemies are surprisingly tanky as well. Like I've, the area mm. I'm in at the moment, they're just they're just small little androids and they have so much health. Oh, wow. And and that's annoying. Again, a lot of this might be get good, but even <laughs> well, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. it has the the classic from software. Enemies can yeah. hit you through walls, but if you swing slightly wrong, uh, your weapon will bounce off the wall like you're fighting in a corridor or something. I noticed that. It's it's very much uh, they they have stuck to that sort of souls like um, uh, or souls born formula to a fault almost, which is you know not necessarily a bad thing. I, I really enjoy how familiar it was almost immediately. Yes, um, but yeah. Uh, it's just like slightly noticeable when you sort of compare it to uh, a couple of the more um, quality of life changes, I guess. But Absolutely. Uh, so so that was kind of annoying. And yeah. also it, it comes with performance or fidelity modes. And even though I had it That's on performance, nice. there yeah. there, were, there was some slowdown in certain mm. areas. Largely mm. it looks great, but in some areas it did slow down yeah. a little bit. So that's worth bearing in mind. But honestly, that's kind of my only feedback is yeah. that it's too hard sometimes <laughs> like uh, other than that i'm really yeah. enjoying it and i only That's intended amazing. to dip into it for a few hours and then go back to Starfield and now mm -hmm. unfortunately Starfield's going to have to wait oh, for me no. to finish Lies of P so oh maybe I'll get a few patches whilst you're you know away from it but um, no that's 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 promising that's really promising yes um, from the small amount I played it was, it's very good very mm. good very promising so. absolutely so thank you very yeah. much to Neowiz for, for providing us thank with the code for this it's out right now on PS5 PS4 Xbox One and Series it's on Game Pass and it's also on PC and Mac as well so it's pretty much everywhere apart mm. from Switch so if Wonderful. you're interested, you want to scratch that itch, go for it. I recommend it. It's hard, nice. though. It's bloody hard. <laughs> yeah, prepare yourourselves. Well, thank you very much, Ben. I guess uh, I should clear off and, and leave you guys back to the podcast. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Bye, James. Bye. Oh, hello. I'm back again. I've ran to a different corner in yeah. the review room. Hello. <laughs> I'm here with Ashton this time. Hello, Hi. James. We have a ginormous room that's just for reviewing. Yeah, it's yeah. it's brilliant. So many, so many unreviewed games mm -hmm. um, yet to get through. But uh, what have you been playing? I have been playing some of the Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty DLC. Nice. It's coming out next week. Um, if you're watching on the mm -hmm. video version, just to like 
clarify things. This footage is not our footage. We're not allowed to yeah. show you our footage. We're just we're only allowed to show you what's, uh, what CD Projekt Red sent us. Yeah, so, strictly approved B-roll. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I've been playing a little bit of that. I haven't played Amazing. too much of it. Yeah. Um, it's quite a, a bulky DLC by the mm. seams of, uh, by the sounds of things. So I've not finished it, but I've played yeah. the first mission and I've gone out into the exploring of... Dogtown, oh, which is where we're set. Amazing. Um, also, there is obviously the big update 2.0 uh, yeah. situation, which is great, and it's got a lot of uh, mm. positive things. But however, when I did load up my save to go into to the DLC, oh, it's completely um, different, right? they've changed everything. They yeah. gave me all my perks back. All of my stuff's <laughs> now just gone and basically useless. So I had to oh, basically no. start again. Yeah. So um, yeah. if you were going like, oh, I just jump straight in from the end. I almost think you'd be better off starting again. I've, I've seen a couple of, of uh, people saying the same thing. It's like it's probably highly recommended. In fact, maybe yeah. CD Projekt Red themselves have said, "Oh, it's probably." Um, I'm sure they they recommended it themselves to like start again. Yeah, uh, which is fair. But, yeah. yeah. So this DLC takes place midway through the story. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you can do it at the end, but it's kind of recommended to do it halfway through your playthrough, just because it kind of makes logical sense to do that. Um, the yeah. DLC adds an entire new ending. So there's already, I think, about mm, four very cool. or five endings to Cyberpunk. This is another one that they've added on, um, which obviously we'll see how that turns out as I keep playing. Hmm. Um, but essentially the story is that you go to Dogtown. Yeah. Um, you're summoned there by uh, someone called Songbird, who says, uh, please come to Dogtown, please. Mysterious. So you go over and she hacks into your relic. Oh, no. Yeah, and so she's talking to you. She's a net runner. Everyone's just getting inside your head in that game. Exactly. Yeah. And basically, you have to save the president of the new United States. Amazing. Uh, who ends up in Dogtown. Yeah. And you have to take her around the place to try and save her life cool. and get her back to being the president. Yes. Um, there is a new gang. So there's there were the animals and all that kind of the gangs yeah, around. Yeah. This is a new gang that's just in Dogtown. Cool. There's no police. It's just this gang. So it's quite a self-contained little um, mm. area. The whole point of Dogtown is that um, you can't go in unless you've got clearance and basically yeah. no one has clearance. There's this kind of like military commander guy who's taken over and mm. he's just running it how he wants to run it. Yeah. And he's kind of the big bad. Nice. Um, but I'm really enjoying it so far. Obviously, with the 2.0 update, mm. the game does look fantastic. Yeah. Um, it plays really nicely. All the all the upgrades that they've done to the game since release, this is obviously, as they said, like the final mm. version. So I think that like it's a really good time. If you've been putting off playing it, I'd recommend mm. playing it now. Um, unless you have previous gen consoles in which case <laughs> well yeah you don't get the, the 2.0 update unfortunately no, but no, yeah you don't. but i do think it's they've done some really good um things with the update and mm. they've changed all the perks they've changed a bunch of stuff of how it works um i like the trans mod stuff i know this is stuff mm. that has been involved for a little while now but i haven't played yeah. it since i first released it i also couldn't remember how to play the game for a while so i was, <laughs> I was dying a lot um but the dlc itself seems really interesting mm. the story is really um kind of different from what you've done before it's like a spy thriller yeah, is what it they is kept a spy advertising thriller, as. Exactly. Yeah, there's like certain a, things I, I can't tell you yeah. about the story because they don't want me to spoil it for everyone <laughs> but um, yeah the spy thriller aspect's really uh, intriguing mm. you kind of get sworn in to the what I assume is the FBI or the CIA yeah. it's called the FIA so it's kind of like yeah, a smash okay. of the two things together nice. um, and you're trying to help the president and she mm -hmm. is a nice lady sometimes Yay. She <laughs> kicks ass. Nice. Um, but yeah, I think that it's a very interesting expansion to the rest mm. of the game. And I think that if you are looking for a reason to play Cyberpunk, I would recommend maybe getting the DLC and playing the whole thing yeah. as it is now. Because like I said, this is the definitive edition mm. and the DLC adds a whole new area to explore, um, adds an entire new storyline to to explore which is really nice and I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward it's, to getting into it more yeah it's, it's really promising it's so nice to see it almost feels like this is the game that they sort of wanted to like shoot for in the first place yes, and now exactly. finally you know it's mm. it's that sort of and and a lot of it seems to just come with that free update as well yeah. so there's there's almost uh, you know two parts to sort of consider here you know if you don't if you just want to jump in and you've been waiting, I've not played it since the launch. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I enjoyed my time anyway at launch, despite all of the, you know, uh, quite Lots. a few problems, quite a few problems, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, 
Yeah, and and now it feels like the perfect time to sort of jump in, even if you're not interested in DLC. But the DLC looks very cool, like in mm. terms of how they've sort of contained the story. Mm-hmm. How how did they? Um, because I, I, I think I heard about they, they sort of introduce it sort of halfway through. Um, but it's weird that they've got the... Because um, there was that part of the city that was always called enough. And yeah. then they've sort of like, suddenly it's there. How, how did they introduce that to um, you? To be honest, not really. I yeah. think um, you don't really necessarily notice. I mean, if you'd played mm. like now, and then you play when the DLC comes out, and you're standing yeah. in the same space, you might be like, hey, that wasn't there before. But... <laughs> For the most part, um, it doesn't seem like I just got them in shoehorned. In. Yeah, it's not like plonked because, like in you said, there was an area yeah. where like you could you couldn't get in. So yeah, it's kind it's of weird. like it's been there, but you know, mm. no one was going in there, so it's not a big deal. Um, yeah. And like you say, you can join in anytime. So they get a phone call. You can just be invited over to Dogtown. Mm. You get in there, and then you can go in and out as you please um, after a certain point, which yeah. is good. Because I was really worried that I was going to be stuck in Dogtown, <clears throat> that I was going to mm. be like, finish the DLC first, and then yeah, go back. No, freedom, but no you but... can go back and forth, which is good. Oh, Eventually, brilliant. you yeah. get um, allowed to tra- travel between the two, because there's like a door that you haven't got clearance for, yeah. but you do eventually get clearance <laughs> for it, so you can yeah. get in and out. Um, there's only one door in and out of this place. <laughs> and that's it. Um, but yeah, I, cool. I really enjoy it. And I mean, that in typical Cyberpunk fashion, I did encounter a few bugs. Well, yeah. So one, <laughs> Almost expected. One expect point this after one, right? a firefight, yeah. um, there was this big like drone thing. Mm. And the drone thing was just kind of sidestepping. And like, <laughs> okay. I was waiting for someone to yeah. say something and no one was saying anything. So I was just like, <laughs> hello. And I had to reload the save and do oh, it again. But shame. that's fine. It is, again, still kind of pre-release. There might be an update that fixes these things mm. when the DLC comes out officially. Um, I know that we've said that before about Cyberpunk, but maybe this time it will. Yeah, um, it, it does feel like it's... Um, I mean, again, I can't comment like personally from experience, but it, it sounds like all of these bugs have slowly and surely through the updates you know, been squashed mm-hmm. down to like, yeah, there's still going to be some, yeah. I'd imagine, but I guess more acceptable levels, yeah. hopefully, anyway. But, I was also really yeah. worried for a bit that Johnny Silverhand, aka mm. Keanu Reeves, yes. wasn't going to be in the DLC. Oh, no. Um, because he kind of My gets boy. like shoved out of the way at first. Yeah. But then I was like, oh, did he just not record any voice lines? But he is in it. He's back now. Yes. And he's talking Come about on. stuff. But there was a okay. good like hour of the game where I was like, oh my God, Keanu yeah. Reeves is just not in this DLC. <laughs> That's crazy. But he is in it. Don't need to worry. He is <laughs> there. Just clip existing voice lines yeah, yeah, yeah. together Ex- really, really clumsily. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, um, so yeah, that's Phantom Liberty. And if you're thinking of getting stuff. it, I would recommend it. Mm. I'm enjoying it so far and I'm definitely looking forward to play some more. Fantastic. Well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really excited to sort of check that out again mm. after all the other bloody things. It's so many good like rpg options now yes. at the minute and yeah. my God, all of them are just gonna take up loads of time but yeah, yeah. really excited for this one yeah that's cool well let's head over now Brilliant. to the rest of the podcast thank you very much see you later bye well it's time for question two now comes from cameron keywood uh Bo Radar, Welsh for good morning, Bap. You've mentioned it briefly in last week's podcast, but what do you think about the whole Unity situation? As a game developer myself, I've never used Unity, but have focused on other engines such as Unreal and RenP. Unity has lost a lot of trust, um, of, lost the trust of so many indie developers due to the new pricing per install initiative. These developers are now switching to Godot. Is this the beginning of the end for Unity? And is there any reason you can think of other than greed? Kind regards, Cameron J. Keywood. Thank you, Cameron. Thank would you, you Cameron. like to know what's been going on? I would Please. love to. I've got a little write-up from the Bibica. This is the BBC. The Bibica. Um, the company behind the development tool said it wanted to charge studios every time a game made it with made with it was installed. Among heavy criticism, studios behind indie hits like Among Us, Slay the Spire, and Cult of the Lamb threatened to ditch the tech in protest. Unity's now said it will amend the policy, but developers say we'll have to work hard to regain trust. Earlier this week, the company said it wanted to charge its customers a fee every time someone installed a game based on the engine. Um, It said the charge would only kick in once a game hit a certain number of downloads, but could be as much as 20 cents or 16p at the top level. That's customers as in people who made their games on Mm. Unity, not customers who bought the games. Mm -hmm. Um, This generated a quick, angry response across the games industry, and some studios threatened to move to different engines, even if it meant possible delays to new releases. Gary Newman, creator of the popular Gary's Mod and founder of Facepunt Studios, said the move has left people furious. This would be like Adobe charging all users for 
of Photoshop per image view, he said. Developers also accused the company of violating their trust and raised questions about how the charge would be applied. In particular, developers worried about charge for inst installations of pirate copies mm -hmm. and potential effects that were promoted on subscription services like Microsoft Game Pass could have. This led Unity to issue a statement last Thursday cl clarifying some conditions of its new fees in an attempt to claim calm the situation and insist the majority of developers won't be affected. But this is also heavily criticized, leading to further statement leading to a further statement apologizing for the confusion and angst it has caused. Unity said it would make changes to its policy and share an update in the next few days. We have heard you. We apologize for the confusion and angst the runtime fee policy we announced on Tuesday caused. We are listening, talking to our team members, community, cu uh, customers and partners and will be making changes to the policy. We will share an update in a couple of days. Thank you for your honest and critical feedback. We've had no updates since then. This no. Was a few no. Days ago they also now. have had to close some of their offices. Yes. Because some unhinged people on the internet decided to issue death threats yeah, yeah don't do that why no. please it's not that deep please. and, and it's also definitely it's not like the it's individual not their staff fault. members uh yeah. you know made the decision who's made that decision yeah. yeah never do that thank you um yeah this is this is kind of mad um and i kept sort of reading it as it was coming out thinking like am i sort of naive or like do, do i not know enough about development game development and game publishing to the point that like I'm misunderstanding what they're saying here. But no, mm. I was reading what was they, what they were actually saying. And yes, that's what they were saying. But I just thought this can't actually be, I must be, I must have something wrong here. But no, um, I also thought, well, what about pirate copies of games? Uh, because, you know, at least there's a justification. Well, it doesn't justify it, but at least there's the argument that Unity might make, which is that, well, if someone's installing your game, you've just made some money off the fact that they've bought your game. So at least, yeah, all right, we're charging you 19p or whatever, which they shouldn't be doing. Um, but at least it's coming out of a, a sale. Mm. But if someone pirates the game and then installs it, what happens? Does mm. does Unity as a as a system s still sort of uh, log the fact that someone is installing that game and charge the developer, even though the developer hasn't actually had uh, any money from a sale there? Can you that's, uninstall it and reinstall well, it? That's, that's the other thing. Said. Yeah. Is, it, is it every time you install the game, even if you only bought it once? Does mm. every install cost another 19 Install bombing is what some people have been throwing around yeah. as a yeah. potential thing. Instead of review bombing, if people hate a game, they buy it, yes, that developer gets money, but then they can just install it over and over and, yeah. and essentially bankrupt yeah. it's insane. the company. Because I, I do that um, with my Steam games at the moment. I only ever have like two or three Steam games installed at once mm. um, just because I have a lot of crap on my PC partly. Uh, and so... I end up like deleting uh, games when I'm done with them. And then it might be a game that I still play every like few months. Like I, I'm quite often tempted to pick up Orcs Must Die again every every now and then. But I don't, not long enough, uh, not often enough that I keep it on my PC. So I install that probably two or three times a year. Mm -hmm. Like that's not two or three sales a year. I bought it once years ago. And since then, I've probably installed it to my computer six seven eight times maybe mm. Mm. like what what does that mean i don't think that's a cost them two game, pounds yeah well exactly yeah the truth of the matter is this is just greed yeah mm. like yeah. there's no yeah. there's no like if ands or buts it's just they're being greedy um if they did maybe upped their prices of how much it would cost like as a service to use unity i think people would be upset but that's one thing then we're going to take some of your profits of a game that you made using some of our stuff and uh you've got there's nothing you can do about it because uh mm. you've done it now you've made it on our service and it's stuck there yeah um a lot of obviously indie studios and smaller studios but there's like you know a pokemon game recently was made on uh, pokemon go i think yeah um uh so there's not like it's all small games mm. there's big game. i mean cult of the lamb and among us aren't small games anymore mm. and uh i think the first i saw about it was a developer basically being like, you're telling me that I have to give you three times as much as my profit is. Like, mm. I don't have enough money uh, for this. And there was also worried that it would be retrospective in stores yeah, as well. Yeah. So it's all kinds of things. Admittedly, like their initial statement was confusing and a lot of this has now been clarified. They've said that it won't affect the Xbox Game Pass. Um, mm -hmm. That was another concern. Yeah, yeah. they've said that it won't uh, have, it won't, include retrospective stuff and they retroactive. think that, retroactive sorry and i think they've also said that uh it won't include pirate stuff as well but still how can they how, how can do they, they know? Yeah. yeah exactly it doesn't like if does they know it just what is and something? Isn't, like pirate, pirate why haven't they been wise? doing more yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
But again, it's because it doesn't say purchases. If it yeah. was purchases, yeah. it would make so much more sense. Mm -hmm. But because they're saying installs, yeah. that's where the issue is. Like, because like you say, how if it just triggers a thing that, oh, this game's been installed, then how do they know where that game's come from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. It's it is dreadful. I don't think you can really say much in defense of this at all. I don't. Th I think it's indefensible, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. It's come out of nowhere. It's obviously completely taken all developers by surprise, uh, and it was super ambiguous to begin with. Which is, as you were talking about, Ashton, like th that people thought that they would potentially owe hundreds of thousands of dollars in back payments yeah. for. A for something that they were going to try and sneak in at the last minute. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the write-ups that I've seen about this and a lot of the discourse I've I've seen about this um, makes the very valid point that at this point, the relationship is irreparably damaged yeah. between Unity and the people who use it. I imagine a lot of people will now permanently jump ship because if mm -hmm. they try it once, there's a good chance they might try it again. Or something else. And also they have not promised they will completely walk it back. It sounds like they're just going to come back with a slightly altered version of the deal yeah. and it's still going to suck. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully they completely do away with this uh, because it's bollocks. Um, and whatever they do come back with, if they come back with something that that isn't it completely walked back, uh, I hope it's perhaps a bit more acceptable to developers because it's it's, yeah. it's just awful. Well, that's the people that are really affected by this. Is the, the people who are currently developing games mm -hmm. who yeah. like like they've they're said like four years into a development they're four years cycle. Into cycle. They're now worried that they're going to have to switch. Um, is it software engine? engine, engine yeah. Sorry, yeah. Um, to something completely different and essentially like not start from scratch, but pretty much start afresh in mm. a new engine, which is kind of the most difficult thing to do this far into some of these games. So mm. ugh, it's it's a big shame for these smaller developers. It's, ju it's just like having everyone's confidence completely shaken. Mm. Like Unity was just this platform that people used for years and yeah. you knew how it worked, and then suddenly they've they've come and said. Oh, by the way, um, it's completely different now. And everyone's and gone. taking all your money. Hang on. What? This has never been. And now, even if they come back and say, oh, actually, you know what? You're right. Sorry. We shouldn't have done that. There's always going to be something in the back of developers' mind saying, this isn't as safe as it was. No. Thinking about it, is it Unity that Alex uses? Was going to no, use no, for no, our no. game? No, no. I think he's using Unreal. So oh, Unreal. Yeah, yeah. I did think that. But I think, yeah. yeah, the game we're making is not going to be in Unity. Um, uh, but you're right as well, Ben, that like because this is like they have irreparably damaged their their reputation on this. Mm. Hopefully it it also like quite because when things like this happen in an in, from a one specific company, it, it makes you think like, is this what several other companies like big names were also thinking like, you know, mm. in that industry, have they all been saying like, we could start charging for installs mm. and then one of them has gone for it. Um, so I hope they've sort of made an example of themselves. And if anyone else was thinking like, oh, we've heard that Unity is about to announce this thing. Maybe we should look into yeah. that as well. Hopefully it will uh, prevent other people from doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it will give it, it will give the opportunity for a, for a new engine or a new new mm -hmm. potential platform to to rise in its place where yeah. they they're literally their entire sort of, you know, company slogan or whatever is we're not going to screw you over. Uh, yeah. here's, here's an engine, you know, it's, it's brand Zero new. Zero cost per install. And, you know, you can, you can come over here and do, I mean, if Unreal or, or like Epic or, you know, whoever wanted to really take advantage of this, they would just say, oh, by the way, our thing doesn't have any, you know, they yeah. would, they mm -hmm. would just, this is a great opportunity mm -hmm. to just mm -hmm. get even more market share. But, but also it's a good opportunity to see if people jump from Unity, how that changes some stuff because there's a lot of obviously similar assets that are used in a lot of Unity yeah. games. So maybe if they go, everyone goes somewhere else, we'll see if there's a bit of a shift in what games look like and what, yeah. which assets start getting reused. Yeah, over absolutely. There's a reason my first Unity game is is something of a meme. You know, mm. when you when you see these games on various storefronts that are like mm. £1.50 and they use these crap assets and these crap animations and it all looks the same. Like the, what was it, the Last of Us ripoff that we played? Oh, yeah. The Last Hope. Yeah. Yeah. Dead end, Dead end survival. Dead know. zone survival. Dead zone survival. Yeah, that was quite clearly an asset flip video mm. game where they just ripped some assets together. That may have even been on Unity, actually, uh, which just goes to show that everyone, you know, from all levels of skill uses this engine. It, yeah. It's far, this could have far reaching implications. Mm. So uh, hopefully it doesn't happen. We will. I mean, they may have released a statement by the time this podcast releases. We're recording on Thursday, but as yet, nothing, nothing mm -hmm. more. So yeah. we'll see. It's time to do something a little bit strange. Oh. You're right. 
Yeah, a there's bit... a little bit of a puddle on the... Oh, a puddle. Uh, the puddle I think from? maybe from the bottom of my cup. Okay, not the ceiling. No. That's good. I don't think so. That would have been anyway. a bit weird, wouldn't it? Sorry. A, a little bit, strange. bit weird. It's weird news. It's weird news time, time for some weird video game news. Remember, you can submit weird video game news to us on the relevant social media platform on a Tuesday when the post goes out. Uh, however, if you'd like to guarantee a shout out at this point in the podcast, you need to go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump supporters at the appropriate tier and become a podcast producer just like... G.Y. Goliath. Nicole Hansen. Duncan Wilson. Katie Garrod or Jared. Eric C.U. Potato Shack 99. Gav O.B. Nexus Polaris. What about Melody? Melody sorry, uh, that was on my other page. Sorry, uh, sorry, oh, it's, sorry. It's, it's, Melody Elbonette. Uh, Gabrielle Philippink. Blake Thomas. Mike Key. And Janet Wicks. Wicks. Thank you, podcast producers. Thank you, podcast producers. There's a printing error there. Ashton's yeah, were stretched there was between like two pages. There was one on the other page and I just missed it. Sorry. Oh. Thank you so much, podcast producers. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Peter, have you got some strange news there? I've got some strange news. That is the name of the section, strange yes. news. <laughs> strange announcements. This yeah. was sent via Facebook from James Matthews, top fan. Top fan. Not top fan. related to me. No. 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 Well, Jim, could be. Jim Matthews. Maybe. How do you know? That's true. Um, do you have a cousin called James? Do you, you do? <laughs> well, this could be sent I don't from think your cousin, them. top fan. Yeah. Um, this, uh, I think was sent by other people as well. Um, but only one person on Facebook and I was on the Facebook page today. So, uh, according to Kotaku, Elon Musk brought a gun to a cyberpunk 2077 recording session. This was submitted a lot on Twitter as well. Right. Uh, Musk interrupted then girlfriend Grimes's voice recording sessions, possibly with an old school pistol. Uh, this is written by Ashley Barden. Uh, here we go. During Cyberpunk 2077's development, Elon Musk begged developer CD Projekt Red to give him a cameo by interrupting ex-girlfriend and mother of at least three of Musk's at least 11 children, <laughs> uh, Grimes' voice acting sessions with a gun, uh, Walter Isaac's new biography Elon Musk reveals. Grimes was recording lines for Lizzy Wizzy, a bioengineered pop star and murder bot in the action-adventure role-playing game, Isaacson writes, before Musk, quote, showed up at the studio wielding a 200-year-old gun. I guess that this vintage gun is the replica flintlock pistol Musk keeps on his bedside table. But I, And that's hyperlinked to a different article. Mm. Uh, but I wouldn't put it past him to have as many as, to, uh, to as 200-year-old guns as he has children. The studio guys were like sweating, Grimes told Isaacson. However, ultimately, CD Projekt Red rewarded Musk with a small cameo. I was he in the game? I told them that I was armed but not dangerous, Musk said to Isaacson about the incident. He's just great, isn't he? I hate this mm, man. Yeah. The biography suggests Musk fixated on cyberpunk partly because the game's prevalent cybernetic implants reminded him of his company Neuralink, which is, ded which is dedicated to brain-computer interfaces and was recently FDA approved, FDA approved for human trials, uh, and partly because he thought the game looked like the future. That's, that's why I liked it. Ashton, can you give us that quote, please? Oh, yeah. I read a book this on holiday. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Actually, I read three books. Oh, Get my God. Holiday. She's got the book uh, bug. And there's a line that says, um, hold on, let me, let me just read it because I don't want to mess it up. Okay. It's from Richard Osman's book, uh, Thursday Murder Club. Uh, and it says... You're so, you're so trendy and normy now. You're reading books like mm, that. I know. It's... Good for you. He's all the things that can go wrong with men if you leave them to their own devices. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's what he is. He is. It's um, a good quote. I said trendy and normy, like they're the same thing. That in a way they're opposite things. But you know, you do all the the normal trends that people do. Um, the last bit here, while discussing designs for the unreleased Tesla Cybertruck, first announced in 2019, Musk routinely referred to the Cyberpunk 2077 trailer alongside the car from the video game Halo, as well as Blade Runner 1982. So uh, yeah, he he just he just loves cyberpunk. That's the, it is the future. That's the past. That's literally all of those examples came from the past, though. Yeah, mm. Musk. He is um, he's so detestable. Mm. Like everything I hear about him, just oh, it's it's astonishing to me that he was ever as beloved as as he was. Yeah, well, years ago he mostly you wouldn't really hear much about him. Occasionally there'd be a news story like he's made a rocket or he's. <laughs> 
It's got a flamethrower. This is a mm-hmm. thing. It's called Tesla. What do you think? And like when you would hear stuff in the early days, it'd be like, okay, cool. That's this sort of slightly strange billionaire doing interesting things. Mm. Then he became vocal and you actually heard and saw far more of him than you ever wanted to see. Mm. He's a buffoon. And yeah, he I'm, just kind of... I hate hearing about him as well. Yeah. Like you just can't escape him. It's like when Trump was president. It's like I, I just, if I could mute the word Trump or the word Musk from my life, mm. I would love that. He's just, he just makes me cross. Every yeah. time I block him on Twitter, he um, they unblock him. On my really? Twitter, Good, yeah. They do that. It's, really it's such a wow. cursed platform, isn't it? Did you yeah. see that he was thinking of uh, charging all users yeah. for access to Twitter? That would kill the platform. Yeah. That would, that would die. I God, also, I, I would him. never trust a man who can't even run a website to put an implant in my brain. Personally. Oh, no, absolutely not. He's got some amazing people working for him, but while he's making the decisions, I wouldn't trust that. No. Mm-hmm. The, the, he's also still not fully transitioned the brand across because I was on some little side page on Twitter the other day. It was like the privacy page or the support page or something like that. Mm-hmm. And just at the bottom, it had this like whole paragraph of copy that just referred to it as Twitter over and over again. And like, It's because they're running a skeleton crew of like yeah. six developers mm-hmm. who never sleep yeah. because everyone else and quit. And it's just the one person just community noting everyone on Twitter being yeah. like, this is actively not true. Just yeah. mugging everyone off. Did you see no. that um, someone tweeted saying uh, Elon Musk something like Elon Musk is dead or has passed away or something. And there was a community note that like was added to it saying, this is correct, Elon Musk has passed away. (laughs) And it was like rated helpful by 40 people Mm. or something. It sucks. That sucks. I'm I'm so sorry for those developers that had to put up with that. Mm. And Grimes as well. Yeah. Yeah. Awful. Ashton, you got some weird news? I do have some weird news. It comes from RB, not Rules Boss, at R underscore B84 on Twitter. Could be Rules Boss. Could be Rules Boss. Could be your cousin. Could be my cousin. Mm. Uh, Richard Bathurst. From IGN uh, by Wesley Yin Pool. Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 1 fans are roasting the $70 Nintendo Switch version for its eye popping visuals. I didn't realize they were doing $70 games on Switch. That feels like, that feels particularly unfair. Yeah, especially when you considering it's not saying it's on a platform. different console yeah. and get it like a far better build. Um, and then the subtitle is Goro, no. Um, <laughs> Mortal Kombat 1 is out in the world following its early access release. And so fans finally have a chance to check out the visuals in the Nintendo Switch version. Unfortunately, early impressions are negative. So much so that the Nether Realms fighting game is already approaching meme status. The Nintendo Switch version of Mortal Kombat 1 was always going to look worse than the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S versions, given the power available from the hardware. But fans were shocked to discover the extent of the downgrade. It's clear to see the character models are generally low quality here, but the internet is having fun with the character's eye characters' eyes, which on Nintendo Switch appear to pop out of their eye sockets, and not in a gory fatality kind of way either. Um, and there's a bunch of like tweets of the pictures of it they're just absolutely utterly ridiculous they look untextured don't they, they are like they, haven't, they haven't loaded they've in not properly. done um they've not put facial expressions so they're just like blank faces um was it developed internally or was it developed by someone other than netherrealm like did they farm it out done, i don't know studio? i'm not sure as Digital Foundry's John Lineman explains on a post on Twitter, the eyes of Nintendo Switch seem to be static and mostly unlit. So even in a dark scene, they're blazing bright and star- staring straight ahead. It looks hilarious, but seems fixable, and I'm confused that it was shipped that way. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1 is a different port situation than, the, than that of its predecessor, Mortal Kombat 11. The game launched on PS4, Xbox One, blah, blah, blah. Um, Mortal Kombat 1, however, left the last generation behind in favor of the Xbox Series X, PC, and PS5, which made the Nintendo Switch version all the more surprising. Exasperating the issue is the fact that Mortal Kombat 1 on Nintendo Switch is full price, $69.99 from the eShop, which means it costs the same as the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S version, mm. which sparked a number of complaints from Switch owners who feel that a version of the game should cost less. Um, but here's another picture. Oh my god. Yeah, in comparison. Good, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, a ba- <laughs> like when Assassin's Creed is buggy, it like 10 years ago yeah you know, it just looks so outdated it it's, looks like the version that of, of a character model that someone would someone would make for vr chat mm. for yeah. example like a ripped model that just doesn't have any of the details mm. it looks like is. my first unity and it'll be called combat mortal yeah, yeah. 
And it is, looks absolutely Death terrible. fight. It's Death like the fight, first yeah. frame of a cutscene where things are still popping in. And yeah. you know, it's been badly done. Yeah. You can see all the textures. It's utterly unacceptable. Oh, it is, yeah. Uh, and I can't... Sort of a theme this week, isn't it? Yeah. Companies, what are you doing? Being bad. I can't believe that uh, they're kind of almost getting away with it. If someone's got a Switch version pre- pre-ordered, please cancel it. Yeah, don't do that. You do not want this game. Um, yeah, absolute trash. Can't believe it. <sighs> yeah, good Crazy me. behavior. I've also got some weird news. Oh, it's, yeah? It's also about that. Oh, we we gonna we gonna find out a bit more about it now. Oh, uh, this is from uh, PC Gamer and Jonathan Balding. Trailers for Disastrous Mortal Kombat One Switch release contains a Steam achievement pop up. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> That's really funny. The unmistakable silhouette of an unfinished, in development Steam achievement pop up appears in the trailer for Mortal Kombat One Switch Edition. A trailer which is noticeably prettier than the actual, decidedly wonky looking Switch That's, version. Is that e- actually legal? And, uh, it's mis-selling, isn't it? Yeah. False advertising. You, I can't... Is that how they say it? No, yo, probably. I can't believe... It's not Soldier Boy. I can't believe that <laughs> Nintendo finally put an achievement system on the Switch after so long. Joke to viewer in the YouTube comments where the trailer is getting the expected roasting. Mm-hmm. Everyone... We need to find a synonym for roasted, please. Yeah. All of the all of the headlines and all the articles say it's getting roasted. Mm. There's got to be other words. Come on. Uh, the achievement pop, a pop-up appears pwned. in the bottom... Pwned. The achievement... <laughs> The achievement pop-up appears in the bottom right corner of the trailer footage during a section on new gameplay modes. Achievement 38, description 38, it says. <laughs> a pretty familiar format for anyone who has seen what oh an in-progress or development build game looks like on Steam. Seeing that, it's hard to believe that the rest of the trailer contains any footage from the Switch version of MK1. It's not uncommon for video game trailers to be captured on PC or via PCs attached to development kits for game consoles instead of retail console hardware. There is at least a tiny, half-transparent message at the start of the trailer, right. footage not final, when you actually... So full stop. When you actually compare the footage to what Switch players have, however, it really doesn't match up. Uh, and then it continues to talk about that. I was going to say, if they've put something on the screen, then... It probably is legal, but yeah. Mm. Yeah, clarification. Have you also seen the stuff about Megan Fox in Mortal Kombat 1? Getting yeah, roasted. she's also getting pwned. Pwned, yeah, because she's delivering lines like, they must know that we drink blood. That is okay. That doesn't make oh. us evil like, just because we drink blood. Yeah. She's doing like the same caliber acting from the from the Mortal Kombat movie. Do yeah. you remember that? Yeah. And, and so you must die or whatever it is. It's giving AI. Like, it's so good. They've just recorded a bunch of Megan so Fox and been like, Ah, uh, we'll feed it into an AI. I'll be all right. <sighs> there was that interview, wasn't there? Did we do it on cover it on Weird News with with Megan Fox, where she was like, "Yeah, I love Mortal Kombat," mm. and then proceeded to like say nothing about <laughs> yeah. it yeah. at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is fine, you know. Actors don't have to enjoy the properties they're working on. No. But given that her performance is particularly bad, the the poning sounds justified. Mm-hmm. I meant to say as well, Ada Wong, not much better. Still very wooden. Yeah, I think possibly. Fe- feels a bit more animated and I was like oh has, has there been some feedback but I was thinking like no this will have all been recorded like pre-release time, yeah, yeah. Have, so I think yeah just... it's got to be direction with her because I feel like she wouldn't she's That's... a professional voice actor mm. it's just kind of shocking yeah, yeah. Like, whenever she was on screen I know we've talked and, and she's she's been subject to some really messed up abuse oh, yeah. online I mean, which is not yeah. justifiable at all obviously uh, but that stuck out like a sore thumb for me when mm. we were when I was playing that and then when we were playing it on stream like her voice is like bad mm. she's like not really Leon yeah she's <laughs> just she just sounds bored Leon. she just yeah. sounds really bored anyway that was weird news thank you to everyone who submitted weird yes. news to us it's time for a very meaty bit or a very tofu depending on dietary requirements mm-hmm. big discussion <laughs> It's big discussion time, time for the big video game discussion, which comes this week from Dan Clapper, who says, Hey Bap, any thoughts on the accidental leak of Xbox documents, including the revelation that there was serious talk of acquiring Nintendo in the future? Thank you, Dan. Thank you, you, Dan. This is huge. Unless you've been living under a rock, there was a series of leaks that came out this week. I'm going to give you as much information as I can. Uh, It's difficult to know where to start because there was quite so much that was leaked, Mm -hmm. so we may not cover everything, but we're going to try and hit all the big points. I'm pulling from from a number of sources as well, which I will cite, and they will be in the link dump as well. So, per wired.com. 
In what's being cited as the biggest leak in the company's history, Microsoft revealed a massive amount of information about forthcoming Xbox refreshes, next-gen systems, and more after uploading a series of unredacted documents to a court website as part of the ongoing Federal Trade Commission v. Microsoft case. Uh, the leak, which ricocheted across the internet Tuesday, offers not just a roadmap for the gaming giant's years to come, but also never-before-seen insight into Microsoft's inner workings. Somebody got so fired. Absolutely. Yeah. Somebody got somebody, so, so fired. Somebody got pwned. They might banged. be dead. Absolutely banged. Volitioned. Yeah. Absolutely shagged. Got, got completely <laughs> volitioned. Uh, Pure Xbox provides some clarification, which is worth noting as well in all of what we're about to talk about. Um, oh, no, sorry. Yeah, here we are. Let me, I've got it in the wrong place. It's worth noting that these leaked documents aren't up to date and these plans could have changed wholesale since they were drafted up. So bear that in mind. That's the thing. Song. Like this story is everything and nothing. Yes. Yeah. To quote James Bond. They're um, from 2020, 2022. They're from all over the place and there's a good chance that this stuff is yeah. no longer accurate. So bear that in mind. But it is all real at mm. the very least. We know that. Um, so who's to blame? Is it Microsoft or is it the FTC? A lot of people pointed the finger at the FTC, especially Xbox fans who see the FTC as an enemy of Xbox mm -hmm, at the moment because yeah. they're holding up this acquisition. Um, in a statement issued to NBC News, the FTC's Douglas Farrar had the following to say, Microsoft was responsible for the error in uploading these documents to the court. Axios's Stephen Totillo corroborated this, tweeting, Judge Jacqueline Scott Corley has signed an order today that says Microsoft provided the link to, do to documents the court uploaded. So, it is Microsoft's fault. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the FTC's fault. Let's get started with the first one, shall we? Yes, Here let's. come the leaks. These are all from pure Xbox. If they're not, I will, I will tell you. Xbox Series X all digital console refresh planned for late 2024. Apparently planned for an October 2024 release, Xbox Series X will soon go all digital according to the docs. Codenamed Brooklyn, a diskless Xbox Series X console is seemingly in the works over at Microsoft following its recent release of the carbon black Xbox Series S system. In fact, one image below, not obviously in this video, uh, shows an updated Series S and Brooklyn launching in late 2024, hinting that another refreshed Series S could also launch next year. The docs also suggest that the system will be sticking to its current $499 price tag. Is this the uh, the like cylinder one? This the is Alexa the, one. the Alexa, the Alexa, like Alexa. the air purifier, the dustbin, yep, whatever you yeah. want to call it. So yeah, looks like Xbox predictably are going to be do, uh, doing a mid-generation refresh. Uh, this is going to be diskless as well, and it's going to have more storage and run a bit better, one can assume mm. as well. It feels kind of crazy that we're already at this point, given that the past few years have flown by, but mm. it has been... By the time that comes out, it will be four years yeah. since those systems have released, yeah. which is nuts. I like the cylinder one. Yeah. I quite like the look of it. does look like an Alexa. does, does. look like a bin. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, these, the square one kind of looked like a bin as well. So mm -hmm. I don't love that we're leaning more towards digital, but yeah. I do have to accept that we are now living in an age where even if you have a disc of the, the game, mm. you still can't actually play the game unless it's a digital version of the game. So mm. I don't love it. But unfortunately, I feel like we're just going to have to accept that this is the way things yeah, are. Yeah, it's not great for video game preservation, but, um, no. you know, I guess we're going to have to, like, adapt and just move into some other form. Like, pe people who are video game preservationists uh, until now have largely been, you know, doing it by taking a physical disc, trying to remove whatever is from there, make copies, make, you know, uh, mount image files or whatever they're called dumping dumping whereas uh going forward i guess they're just going to have to change their their policies and their procedures and say like okay now this is how we're doing it we're doing digital archives of digital apps and mm -hmm. um you know hopefully there's not difficult sort of copy protection on there that prevents them from doing that yeah mm -hmm. i do see a really appealing angle to this though as someone who is not has not been in the xbox ecosystem for a long time and has no physical games and has no intention to buy any physical games. Mm. And especially as they continue to move towards Game Pass as the the way to play games on Xbox, you're still buying games on Xbox? Ooh, 
get Game Pass. Mm. That's what we want you to get. And that's probably what the thrust of this is. They're like mm. future-proofing themselves. Like, okay, so you only play Game Pass. Well, maybe you've only got a Series S or maybe you've been waiting to jump in. Here is the system to play. Ga- it's the ultimate Game Pass machine. Mm-hmm. This is what this is for. Uh, whereas, if it still happens, I'd be tempted to buy one yeah. if this actually comes out. Yeah. If Brooklyn happens. But whereas, you know, I totally understand those who who have been in the Xbox ecosystem for a long time and have a lot of physical games, mm. much like I am on PlayStation, I would n- there would be no time soon that I would be getting a, a digital-only mm. PlayStation console. Mm-hmm. But I can see the approach from Xbox's standpoint, particularly with Game Pass, mm. that being digital. Next up, the new Sebel or Sebel Xbox controller is set to launch in 2024. This is being described by Microsoft as the world's best controller, packed with features such as precision haptic feedback, VCA haptics that double as speakers, an accelerometer, new modular thumbsticks, a rechargeable and swappable battery, and the ability to lift to wake the device. The controller is expected to be packaged with any new Xbox Series X slash S revisions in the future. Based on some old launch timelines that have also leaked today, the suggestion is that the Sabeel Xbox controller will be announced at some point early next year with a release around with a release around late May of 2024. A price is even mentioned, $69.99, that would make it $10 more expensive than the current Xbox wireless controller for Xbox One and Xbox Series X slash S, but obviously we'll be getting a lot more features for the price. And it looks like it's wearing trousers. It does look like it's yeah, wearing it trousers. Yeah. yeah, sort of a two-tone mm. thing, which is interesting. If an Xbox controller wore trousers, how would they wear it? Exactly. Yeah. Like Are they wearing trousers or is it wearing a shirt? Yes. That's the question. That's the question. Mm. Yeah. We, don't, we don't actually know. Is that the same price as a PlayStation controller? I think that's 16. Um, yeah, 16. It, it very, I think they're they're slightly cheaper now. Right. I think it's about 65 maybe, I yeah, want to say. Yeah. I, I've paid 70 for like special edition, yeah. like the Spider-Man yeah. one, but maybe it's slightly cheaper. Hey, I'm always up for a nice new controller. See if, if it's better. I mean, I don't really notice that much difference in terms of like... Oh, this one's got an accelerometer, did they say? Mm. Yes. I don't know why I'd need that. I think that means that as you move it, it, it's like a motion tracking thing. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, I'm going to be interesting to see how it changes things. I don't know many games that would potentially utilize new controller things. We've seen that with the PlayStation controller. Things still don't get used yeah. like they were meant to yeah. so we'll see how much actually changes any games that are made for the Xbox and whether it actually gets used but I like this wearing trousers yeah <laughs> I don't buy new controllers for new features I just I, if if I if my current controller the battery is just rubbish on it mm-hmm. then I will buy a new controller and yeah. I'll probably just get the most recent controller so that is when I would potentially purchase something like this if I was an Xbox owner I wouldn't go or oh, wow, I must get some of those, even though my current controllers are great and working mm-hmm. fine. So for me, it's not. it wouldn't be a revelation, but uh, I would yeah. end up with one eventually, I'm sure. I think the PlayStation 5 controller is very nice. It is, I really like it. It has a lot of great mm-hmm. features in it that, yes, some developers do not take advantage of, <laughs> but they are really impressive features nonetheless. So while a lot of people still feel more comfortable playing with an Xbox controller and where the sticks are placed and stuff, it makes perfect sense to include some of those features in the next iteration of that, especially if it becomes the standard for all consoles being sold going forward. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what it's going to be. Uh, so there we are. Next up, upcoming Bethesda games, including Doom, Dishonored, Fallout, and Oblivion remasters. A release schedule from July 2020, so this is a while ago, remember, from before they were even acquired, so mm-hmm. this may not be accurate anymore. Uh, uh, has been published online, revealing a whole bunch of games that have never been announced. This list includes Fallout 3 and Oblivion remasters, a new Doom Year Zero game, new entries in the Dishonored and Ghostwire Tokyo series, Starfield DLC, and a number of codenamed projects. It's important to reiterate that the schedule dates back to before Microsoft even acquired Bethesda, so a lot could have changed since then. The release windows will definitely have been pushed around. Plenty of titles have probably been added to the list, and there's a good chance one or two of them could have been cancelled as well. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the important thing. I saw some people react to this online and go, oh my God, I can't remember the actual years, but I think they were like, next year we're going to be getting an Oblivion remake. And it's like, no, if you look at the same schedule, they had Starfield slated to be released in 2022 or 2021, I think Mm -hmm. even in that. I can't remember when it was, but clearly... You're going to have to add a couple of years on to anything that was written in that. If, if indeed it's even, it's happening. Yeah, we had a exactly. cheeky little pandemic where yeah. after this was probably announced. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. So. And then there was a whole acquisition. I yeah. certainly hope that Oblivion yes. re- oh, remaster me too. or remake, and whatever it is. Fallout 3 remaster. Yeah, remaster. I would, would love be, those. Yeah. I'd love to play those because I've been 
tempted for a while to go back to Oblivion. And if maybe there's a, a remaster coming in the next year or two, I might hold off. If it's more than two years, I probably will just eventually play it on Game Pass. But yeah, that's yeah. a it's an exciting prospect. Mm. Yeah. Some more Dishonored as well. Yeah, yeah. Dishonored, Dishonored three. It's exciting to see what they've been considering, but I'm not getting my hopes up until yeah, you know, Official we know some stuff. Yeah. Yes. Next. Microsoft is targeting 2028 for a hybrid next-generation Xbox console. We've already heard that a 2028 launch is the rough timeline for Microsoft's next-generation plans. However, fresh FTC documents have now dropped a hint at what exactly the Xbox owner is planning for its next console, including a new hybrid approach to next-gen gaming. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Microsoft wants to leverage cloud gaming even further as we move beyond Xbox Series X and S. A new leaked document says the team's next console will be a hybrid gaming platform, combining native hardware with new cloud capabilities. It's all a bit mumbo jumbo at the moment, but the Scroogle. long and short of it is that it's Microsoft Squoogle. Yeah. The long and short of it is that Microsoft wants console and cloud to merge closer together in the form of a hybrid next generation console, something that's certainly been hinted at in the past. So that would line up, wouldn't it? Eight year mm -hmm. console life cycle. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. It's not entirely surprising that they're thinking of a new console. Uh, and also all those words don't really mean anything. So yeah. uh, guess Until we we'll see have it in to action. see what they actually do with it. Maybe it could be it. the unrealized promise of everything that Stadia was talking yeah. about. You Maybe. know, like save states that you can share with your friends and then, you know, in the form of links Just and they can hop into, in. You yeah. know, all if that they're leaning stuff. more towards digital, it might be much smaller. It might be like a little yeah. device mm -hmm. that you just plug in and it's just basically... Especially if if it's uses internet. cloud as well, like it won't have to do any actual processing at your no. end. So, yeah, it could be really small. I don't it's know a... if I want that. No, me neither. I don't want that. I'd no, like the I, option. I don't want that. Uh, I don't want it to be cloud only, certainly. Yeah. But if they're saying hybrid, then, you know, seemingly that's not yet uh, where we're at. But yeah. I guess probably both Microsoft and uh, Sony and probably Nintendo, too, can see that if not in the next generation, perhaps the generation after, it may just be all cloud gaming. Mm -hmm. That We might be moving towards a world where that is what all gaming becomes. Surely that's like the logical final place for Game Pass to be. Yeah. Isn't it? You know, if they're, mm -hmm. if they're looking at a mid-generation reshuffle that sees them pushing a really powerful digital-only console as the option rather mm. than a more powerful disc one, then it would make sense that the next one is just like, hey, this is it. This is the this is Game Pass. It's a it's a USB stick. Mm -hmm. If it works, then fine. But that's the million dollar question. It certainly it? Yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, the sixty nine billion dollar question. Yeah. Next up, Xbox Phil Xbox's Phil Spencer was dead serious about wanting to acquire Nintendo in twenty twenty. One of the emails that's been revealed as part of today's massive Xbox leak reveals that Phil Spencer was very keen on trying to acquire Nintendo back in 2020, and it seems Microsoft was supportive of, supportive of it as well. Spencer's email from August of that year mentions that Nintendo was THE prime asset for us in gaming, and suggests that Microsoft's board of directors would have been fully supportive if the opportunity arose. As the email details, the Xbox boss also mentioned that getting Nintendo would be a career moment and a good move for both companies, but admitted that trying to convince Nintendo their future exists off their own hardware was taking a long time. In that very same email, it was also referenced how Xbox was coming quite close to acquiring Warner Bros. games along with ZeniMax Media, but ultimately it was just the latter that ended up being brought, bought sorry, by Microsoft. Could you imagine... Could the the outrage so that if they bought one of the big three just yeah. outright. Yeah. Well, especially Nintendo as well. Like it would almost, I know you could argue that there's a stronger rival between Xbox and Sony than, than any other combination. Mm. So that would be really strange if one of them bought the other. But in a sense, I think it would be even more strange for anyone to buy Nintendo because it feels to me Nintendo has the most unique identity. Mm -hmm. You know, Xbox and Sony are almost kind of doing the same things excluding game pass but you know in terms of like the games that are developed for those consoles and mm. and the kind of the user base it's similar sort of demographics but nintendo is such such a kind of unique entity and the idea that someone could pur purchase them you would have to just do it in all but it would have to literally just be a, a deal where money is being exchanged and then microsoft are profiting from that but you would have to just leave everything in their hands like please just continue to do everything you were doing mm -hmm. keep your identity 
do Nintendo because if they purchased them and then started actually trying to have a hand in like the, the decisions, imagine the the changes that could potentially be made to such a yeah. kind of uh, mm. iconic uh, company. Yeah, mm. I think keep looking at your shirt. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. The butter there, t- Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, I think that it is. It's kind of not scary, but it's a really interesting thing to think about how they were like yeah we can definitely do this yeah we could definitely buy oh, nintendo yeah unfortunately they don't want to but we could definitely do yeah, it we like do the it. fact that one the fact that they potentially could they have enough money yeah. to mm, if yeah. they wanted they to could, that's the thing they could just buy the games in the, if it was legal yeah. they could just do it yeah exactly mm. i mean obviously it would be an even longer and more fraught acquisition than activision blizzard had been i but don't think that one would go through. if there's been this much trouble over, i don't through. think it would go through no, no i don't think so either but it's just scary knowing that he was like yeah we could definitely mm. do it. i reckon yeah we could i want to do it i want to do it and it sounds insane. like it would be almost like a scalp for him you yeah know? and they're like ah this is my, this is my it's favorite a, trophy. Career moment. Yeah. I got Nintendo. Literally, just the Thanos gauntlet. Like, there's Nintendo. Yeah. We yeah. got. We flipping got him. There's the crown jewel. Mm. Um, yeah, it's it's fascinating to to think that this was on the cards or potentially still is on, still is on the cards. It's not detailed in here, uh, but he does basically say we're we're going to have to play the long game on mm. this one. Mm. So again, this was several years ago, but there's a good chance that they still want to do this at some point if they can. Um, and also that uh, I think he said something like like an aggressive takeover probably wouldn't be a good idea almost as if saying that we can we can do this mm. we can make this happen against their will but it probably wouldn't you know the pr fallout would be really bad i'd really yeah. like to see phil do the whole huh thing yeah, you the, know that they do the click i can't click, yeah. oh yeah you can't click i was wondering what you was. know you know what i meant whistle whistle hey, that was it click um, I would like him to be doing Nintendo Direct and that he's still just been dubbed by a translator yes. into a English. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can hear him speaking English in the background, but it's just someone. <laughs> someone with a nicer voice. Hi, welcome to the <laughs> latest Nintendo I'm Direct. Spencer. You can hear him quietly in the background yeah. still speaking English. There's also a massive cultural barrier as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's this, whole, I mean, I can't really get into it because I don't know enough about it and I can't speak on the subject, but there's a real cultural pride and identity in Japanese companies. To be owned by a Western entity would be something of a mild shakeup, to put it very, very politely. Uh, and I don't think, I think it would be an affront, quite frankly, for for that to happen, like almost an insult to to like the the the, the cultural significance of where Nintendo is and their rich yeah. history and so on. Uh, PlayStation, if they wanted to buy PlayStation. That might be a different situation because PlayStation has increasingly shifted away from being based out of Japan to being based out yeah. of the US in recent years. So much so that while it is a Japanese-owned company, it is largely a US-based operation. Mm. So that will be slightly different. Whereas Nintendo, yes, they have Nintendo of America and they do have a big presence there. Nintendo is still a very Japanese company mm-hmm. and that would that would be a tough sell. But they do have a friendship that goes back a long way. They they. they I can't remember the specific details, but when X- Microsoft was first getting into the gaming scene with Xbox, they were targeting Nintendo then as well for various things. So who knows? Mm-hmm. It could happen. Next up, <laughs> at some point, Rockstar was seemingly working on Red Dead Redemption 2 for Xbox Series X slash S. Red Dead Redemption 2 on current gen consoles has been a pretty hot topic since Xbox Series X slash S launched, and while we've not heard anything official on the port yet, it was seemingly in the works at some stage. Thanks to today's huge FTC document leak, we we know that Microsoft was aware of plans for RDR2 to launch on the ninth generation of consoles, including Xbox Series X and S. The leak comes from an internal email that gathered up a bunch of potential upcoming releases uh, when they were uh, set to launch and whether they would likely come to Game Pass. I've actually added an addendum on here because this document is really interesting. Mm -hmm. There's a number of games beyond Red Dead Redemption 2 and there's basically a uh, a column that says they've estimated how much they think it would cost them to bring it to Game Pass. Mm. So they clearly, you know, and also it gives us an idea of how much these games cost to bring to Game Mm. Pass as well. So they cost it up and then clearly approach these, you know, publishers and just sort of say, hey, do you think, how does this much money sound? They've sort of evaluated each of the games. So, uh, let's see. Five million dollars was uh, estimated as the value for Let's Let's Sing ABBA, Just Dance, Return to Moki, M- Bloody hell. Moki Return Island. to Monkey Island, and most interestingly, Baldur's Gate Three. 
was only valued at $5 million. It was valued the same wow. as Let's Sing ABBA. It yeah. was. Mm. Now, to be fair, nobody really knew that Baldur's Gate no. 3, and I think someone involved in Baldur's Gate 3 did, after this came out did say, look, no one took us seriously, all right? Mm. It's the kind of games we make. It's difficult. It would have been difficult for anyone to mm -hmm. know what this game would have been and how it was received. Uh, the higher end of the scale was $50 million. Uh, it was listed as the expected partner ask, which is how they've described it, for Dying Light 2 and Gotham Knights. Imagine wow. if they paid $50 million That's so to get Gotham Knights That's on insane, Game Pass and then... You know, what a bargain. Yeah. I know. <laughs> they should have paid five million for that one. Uh, but yeah, it's just it, that uh, as much. I don't really give a crap about Red Dead Redemption 2. I don't think that's the headline there. I think it's super interesting to see how that how that system works and mm. how they evaluate that. Uh, we've got. There's more. We've got two more. We've got two more. Uh, Phil Spencer pledged to get real honest about Xbox's future after disastrous situation oh, yeah. in 2022. It's no secret at this stage that Xbox wasn't particularly pleased with its exclusive games lineup in 2022. Delays to major projects like Starfield meant that Xbox First Party suffered from a particularly barren year, and a new leaked email from Phil Spencer shows that shows just how disappointed the team was in its output last year. Phil's internal email expressed how Xbox needed to get needed to get much better at overall portfolio planning with real honesty on dates moving into 2023 and beyond. The Xbox boss wasn't shy on just how poor 2022 ended up being from an internal first party perspective. In fact, Phil called the year a disaster situation for us, given how many resources were invested in content across studios. Phil was left frustrated by how the year panned out, but thankfully 2023 has been a much smoother ride for Team Xbox, and you can already see how some of the boss's words from this May 2022 email have resonated in the months since. Mm. He's no idiot. Nope. He's he was well aware of all the stuff that all of us stupid internet pundits have been saying, you mm -hmm. know, about how there's no games and so on. And also not mentioned in here that I've heard elsewhere is that perhaps in the same email, he talks about how they need to plug the gap with more third party Game Pass acquisitions, which ties into what we just talked mm -hmm. about. And also, I think that was quite evident in 2022. There was a really strong stream mm -hmm. of Game Pass partnerships yeah. for players to have instead of first party games. And it is a good, it is a good way to to fill that gap for mm -hmm. sure. To fill, to spend, to, to fill that, that gap. gap. Um, yeah, if you if you have um, d delays that are kind of out of your control, and you're suddenly left with just a, a, a massive gap in uh, your first parties. Why not just bring up, you know, Gotham Knights? Mm. Way more, yeah, Gotham Knights. Fifty Knight. million. Why not add way more value to your uh, your product um, with with doing that third party mm. stuff? Yeah. He's definitely not lucky. I suppose a bit lucky that he um, has come out after Redfall came out and been very candid and very honest about what's been going on at Xbox yeah. and how his feelings are. He's done him a huge favour. Because favorite I well. think if he'd have turned around after Redfall and been like, ah, uh, you know, mm. we're still good. Everything's good. We never even worried a little hey, if bit. if it was Embracer, we'd shut him down. Yeah. <laughs> and then like a few months later, this comes out where he's like, yeah, things are, things are going pretty bad right yeah. now. I think maybe this is reflecting quite positively on him in mm. that he's been honest in the months since about how it's been going over there. So... Yeah. If he wasn't already thinking about every time he wrote an email, what would I do if this email got out? He'll certainly be thinking it now. Like, well, I've got a I've got a final leaked email oh, right, to okay. read at the end where he clearly has written it like a PR statement because oh, yeah. he knew it would get leaked, right. uh, which is interesting. Uh, th next, this is per GameSpot, this one, not pure Xbox. Xbox Series X versus, versus Series S, which sells better? IGN reports that one of the leaked documents shows that Series S accounted for 74.8% of sales, with wow. Series X making up 25.1%. That's maths, but we're missing a 0.1%. <laughs> what is it? Uh, at least in the relatively early days of the platform's life cycle. This information is is accurate as of early 2022, but the mix has shifted significantly since then, it seems. Uh, Sakana analyst Matt Piscatella said on Twitter that Series S makes up a bit more than half of total sales of new Xbox consoles in the US. And for clarification, the Xbox sales were at 21 million units as of early July this year, but obviously they will have sold more. We've already heard about how Starfield has driven uh, yes, a lot of have, yeah. uh, console sales. And there were 40 million PS5 sold as of the end of July this year. So when they're desperate not to ditch Xbox Series S report, they obviously have the figures that show, yeah. oh, mm -hmm. perhaps just over half of our entire Game Pass, you know, subscription base on console 
is playing on Series S, and so we're going to lose why there's them. This, there's this tension now between these developers who are saying, "Hey, it's kind of difficult to uh, develop for like half of your hardware. What mm. you know, stop making us do this." And you know, there's they have to look at those figures and say, "Well, are people buying S's? Are people buying X's? What do we do about this?" And, That's a really yeah, good point. It's got to factor into that decision. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting. Maybe it's why they're leaning more towards this digital X. Mm. Then maybe they're thinking, is it the digital aspect that people are buying or is it just because it's cheap? Is mm. it? Well, that's why I bought it. It was yeah. cheap. Yeah. And also I had no discs. Yeah. So there we are. Phil Spencer issues statement in response to massive Xbox leak. He has now responded to yes. this. Uh, this is going back to pure Xbox now. We've been waiting on a response all day from Xbox boss Phil Spencer following this morning's massive leak of Xbox information, and now the Microsoft Gaming CEO has released a short statement on social media. In his message, Spencer pointed out that the leak was based on old information and so much has changed since then, in uh, in bleh, enthusing that there's a lot to be excited about and his team will reveal the real plans when they're ready. This is the tweet. We've seen the conversation around old emails and documents. It is hard to see our team's hard work shared in this way because so much has changed and there's so much to be excited excited about right now and in the future we will share the real plans when we are ready and then of course the full internal memo to staff then leaked right uh which is the tweet but not the uh not this memo no. which basically says the same thing but does read like a pr statement mm -hmm. so this is it just written by a team of people <laughs> yes well it starts with team yeah Today, several documents submitted in the court proceedings related to our proposed acquisition of Activision Blizzard were unintentionally disclosed. I know this is disappointing, even if many of the documents are well over a year old and our plans have evolved. I also know we all take the confidenti confidentiality of our plans and our partner's information very seriously. This leak obviously is not us living up to that expectation. We will learn from what happened and be better going forward. We all put incredible amounts of passion and energy into our work, and this is never how we want that hard work to be shared with the community. That said, there's so much more to be excited about, and when we're ready, we'll share the real plans with our players. Said it again. In closing, I appreciate all of the work that you pour into Team Xbox to surprise and delight our players. In the days and weeks ahead, let's stay focused on what we can control, continuing the amazing success of Starfield, the upcoming launch of the incredible and, and accessible Forza Motorsport, and continuing to build games, services, and devices that millions of players can enjoy they leak that themselves phil they leak that yeah i think mm. that i don't think it was leaked by a member of staff i think they were like just put this just sneak yeah. this one out as well so those are the broad strokes there's going to be more bits and pieces that people are finding and we haven't covered every single thing there but peter what do you what do you make of that overall i don't know like again i think there's there's so much to this and and yet there's so little to this in the sense that you can't trust there's Almost, almost none of this is. Uh, we we can't make conclusions based on most of this. Yeah. Mm. It is interesting with the. We've learned, you know, a bit more about the model of how um, the pitch happens with come to Game Pass. You know, clearly that's probably still the way they do it. Certainly was the way they used to do it. So that's interesting, and that's something we can take away from this. But with things like the the kind of the the leaked announcements of games that we didn't know about before like the remasters or dishonored 3 or things like that you you can't really go forward saying hey dishonored 3 is going to happen is it is yeah. it actually going to happen it yeah. was certainly conceived of and they talked about it internally but like you know you have to you have to wait and see so i don't know i think it's obviously a shame for them i don't as much as it's um, it's useful and interesting to us to have this information leaked, and it's uh, it's nice to be a disgusting vulture and pick over these bones. I also feel bad for people who are you yeah. know hard at work trying to do the right thing, and Phil as well. Like I found it really cringy reading his emails because I was thinking like I wouldn't want anyone to read my emails. No, There's nothing no. in there that's incriminating, but like I don't like you know this is prose that i've written there's specifically got, for a person there's got to be one from like the past six months where he calls jim ryan like a a, a horrible yeah. name or something i want to read that one that's the yeah. one i want to see so i feel bad for them um and this is all very interesting to read but i think everyone needs to be very very careful how much they kind of latch onto, and it all needs to be taken with a pinch of salt absolutely i Ashton. quite agree yeah I, I mean like you say it's very interesting there's mm. a lot to like unpack from what we've read and what we've seen so far i think that the console and the um controller seemed relatively like 
on their way to being a final product That's kind of situation. And you've got to assume so that. yeah, I imagine they might still happen. They might look a little bit different or they might uh, seem a little bit different than they did in these emails. And maybe we're giving Xboxers a hand and they're seeing everyone's reaction to mm-hmm. these things and knowing whether these yeah. these are going to go down it's well or not. It's invaluable without. like market research. Exactly. Yeah. They're not, they've not got any kind of like negative effects of like, well, it seems like people don't like the console, so maybe we can change some things. Because they've never announced bit. it, so if they, they, it wouldn't like they'd be cancelling it. No, you know, if exactly. If they put a statement out, say they'd announced it a year ago, and then they said, "Oh, we're not doing that anymore," then it's like, "Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, great, yeah. nice to see you can stick at things." But, but now they can they be like, just, "Oh, well, this was an no, old we're never design. Do that. Yeah. You know, it was different than how it was supposed to be." Mm. But yeah, I think that it's very interesting that. that from their perspective, seeing how people are reacting to things. Like you say, I think we should take everything with a pinch of salt. I don't think mm. many of these things are still accurate and or on their way. But if they are, that is exciting. And yeah. it would be nice to see some of these things. So uh, people are a bit upset because didn't they say that Skyrim wasn't going to be announced? Elder Scrolls 6. Elder Scrolls, that's another thing. Gonna be yeah. announced Elder Scrolls 6 is for not. For ages and ages mm. and ages and ages. Oh, and also that it's going to be exclusive. I don't know if that was part of this leak, but that uh, is, I, think I think it, it was. was. Yeah. 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 Elder Scrolls 6 is not coming to PlayStation. Mm. Yeah. Way, yeah. yeah. And the earliest we'll even see it is 2026. Six, yeah. Yeah, yeah, six is the next one. So, yeah, uh, I think it's interesting, but I think that I don't believe any of it yet. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so, so fascinating to get this insight. But it, you're right, Peter, in that it does feel bad because it's insight we shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I do feel very sorry for the people who are hard at work at those studios on things and potentially maybe having the, the rug pulled, pulled from under them. We've heard before about how leaks happen right before SGF or uh, one of Jeffrey's many other shows and it, and a game is about to be announced and it's like, oh man, you know, we worked so hard keeping this a secret for so long and then mm. someone forgets to tick a box on a form upload and then suddenly the entire internet knows about yeah. it. Uh, that's terrible. You're both right in that some of this stuff may never happen. But the most interesting thing is that it, it was going to mm. or was yeah. planned at some point. We yep. know that it was on the cards. I... Quite frankly, I think Phil Spencer comes out of this smelling like roses. I think yeah, I, I think so he too. comes out of this looking really good because he's a he's a passionate businessman that knows games and cares about Xbox. He cares about the brand that he works for. He cares about the and obviously he gets paid by that company, so of course he cares. But it it, it sort of I think it reinforces the character that he has sort of been or the the, the light he's been cast in mm-hmm. all this time, which is this is a man who's really passionate about games. An excited man who just wants Xbox to do well. And he really yeah. likes yeah. games. And yes, they're a trillion dollar mega spooky company that want to buy Nintendo and Warner Bros and flip in Activision Blizzard. And also, according to this, they were looking at TikTok for a while as well. They, it's it's nuts. Like they, No one should have this much power or money. Mm. But I thought Phil came out of it looking so good that there was a part of me that thought, did they... Mean to Did, was this on purpose? Yeah. And then obviously the reaction to it has proven otherwise because there's stuff in there that they probably, you know, he doesn't yeah, want he thing. doesn't want the gaming public to know that he called 2022 a disaster year for no. them. No. But if anything, it makes him more of a sympathetic figure. Just like mm-hmm. after the Redfall thing when he did that interview with Kind of Funny and he was very honest there and said, yeah, this sucks. It's really disappointing. And and it's, I yeah, I think this is, this will only work out well for them. And it gives us a very interesting look at where Xbox is planning on going in the next 10 years as yeah. well. Yeah, and the fact that there's no sort of damning tone in any of his emails either. Like if he just said the same things, but in a kind of more aggressive way, like mm. you guys need to put more work in, it's all on you, the yeah. reason why this hasn't happened or yeah, I think it, he, he had, yeah, he's come across as like a, a pretty genuine guy and you know, who wants the best for the company. We'll see. We'll see. If only we could get some passion out of Jim Ryan on PlayStation, yeah. that would be impossible. How actually. I think he's a robot man. Mm. He's mm. never seen a Gran Turismo. What is no. it? He doesn't know. Anyway, let us know what you think of all of the stuff we've discussed today in the comments below and the various other places you can find us on the internet, such as Peter Austin. YouTube.com and Twitch.tv, both forward slash Team Triple Jump. We put all of our videos on YouTube and almost all of our uh, live streams happen on Twitch. Occasionally we do a special one on YouTube, but Mm -hmm. go to Twitch if you want to see us live. Go on. Go Go on. on. Go on. Please. Um, we have a Twitter, a Facebook, a TikTok, and an Instagram on which we are all Team Triple Jump. So you want to check those out. And if you want to join our Patreon, it's patreon.com forward slash Team Triple Jump. 
tripleju.mup. That's tripleju.mp is our website. There's loads of stuff on there, links to everything, any career opportunities. There aren't any at the moment. Uh, link to our shop if you want a cameo from any of us or James Jenkins, all, all sorts of stuff, as well as the things that these guys just listed. There's links to everything on there. So that's the hub you want to go to. Why not leave a five-star review on your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms and we'd really appreciate it. Uh, you know, it helps push us up the podcast charts, I assume. I don't know. I don't really pay much attention to that, but it's important. So go do it. And it's free. It doesn't cost you anything to leave mm. a five-star review. Mm. Yeah, we'd really appreciate it. It means a lot to us. Peter, can you tell us about this week's sponsor one more time? Please? Yeah, that's right. Um, I will. Uh, it's Cyberpunk Fandom Synergy. Why fake if hand do that? Yeah, this is Synergy. Synergy mm. is happening. All those fandoms coming What if together. we synergy together? Could we do that? Could we syn- <laughs> Could we synergize? We're just holding hands. Oh, really? synergize. Look at us synergize. That's amazing. So, so much synergy. Pete, your hands are very cold. Yeah, yours are very warm. <laughs> you yeah. guys have got bad and good circulation, <laughs> respectively. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, thank you so much for listening you. slash thank watching, everybody. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.